powered from the Perdomo Scar Studios on the Black Stage in Indian Trail, North Carolina, and broadcasting from the Drew Estate Studios in California. It's episode 247 of the Primetime Show. Tonight, we welcome Hector Alfonso Sr. of Espinosa Cigars back to the show as our special guest. And as always, the Primetime Show is sponsored by Saga Cigars. De Los Reyes introduced another chapter of the saga, the Saga Celez. Celez is a Spanish word that means leisure after work in the spirit of the standing ideal of owning your own journey and making your own saga. Saga Celez is the perfect companion to enrich those moments of choice, making them truly yours. Saga Celez carries a blend of Criollo Oro and Piloto Cubano wrapped in a selected Ecuador Shade Claro wrapper that generously delivers with elegance a surprisingly rich and balanced smoke. It's available in three sizes at an affordable price. Ask your retailer for a Saga Celez. And by Perdomo Scars. Awarded Nicaraguan Cigar of the Year in 2014 by Cigar Journal, the Perdomo 20th anniversary brand has consistently earned the highest scores in the industry and is a top seller in humidors around the world. The Perdomo 20th anniversary brand requires tobacco has been carefully hand-selected and well-aged for a minimum of eight years. The Perdomo 20th anniversary is offered in three distinct wrappers, a smooth, creamy Ecuadorian Connecticut, a rich, earthy Cuban seed Nicaraguan sun-grown, and a dark, oily Cuban seed Nicaraguan Maduro. Combining these beautifully bourbon barrel aged wrappers with thick, high priming binder and filler tobaccos gives each blend a balanced complexity with layers of rich flavors and smooth, elegant aromas. Perdomo Scott is a family owned and operated company headquartered in Miami, Florida, with manufacturing and agricultural facilities in Esteli, Nicaragua. Perdomo's highly acclaimed cigar brands include the Perdomo State Selection Vintage, the Perdomo Double Age 12 Year Vintage, Perdomo 20th Anniversary, Perdomo Reserve 10th Anniversary, Perdomo Abano Bourbon Barrel Age, Perdomo Lot 23, Perdomo Immense of 70, and many more. For great tasting notes and pairing information, check out the Perdomo website at www.perdomocigars.com. And by Aganorso Leaf, uh, this month you could check out uh, the Aganorso experience um, on the Cigar Coop uh, website. If you go over to the sidebar uh, and click on the Aganorso experience, uh, that will take you to Aganorso Leaf's YouTube channel. And this month's Terrence Riley is highlighting the concept of validation and how Aganorso Leaf uses that concept in their day-to-day -day operations. So again, go to the cigar-coop.com uh, page, click on that sidebar, and you'll, you'll be able to access uh, that content and a lot more content from Aganorso Leaf. And of course, you can visit Aganorso Leaf at www.aganorsoleaf.com. And finally, by Drew Estate, check out and download the Drew Diplomat app via mobile device. Keep up with everything going on Drew Estate. Experience the subculture that is the rebirth of cigars. It's available on iTunes and Google Play. For more information, check out www.drewdiplomat.com. And as always, all the live streams for the Primetime Network is here. is sponsored exclusively by Drew Estate, as well as the California Studios for the Thursday Primetime Show. Well, welcome, everybody. This is Primetime Episode 247. Uh, today is Thursday, October 27th, 2022. It's Will Cooper. I am on the black stage here in the Perdomo Sky Studios. And I'm joined cross-country uh, by my friend and colleague, Mr. Aaron Loomis. How are you doing tonight, Will? I'm doing very well, doing very well. Um, it's actually a busy week on the Cigar Coop for Me site because this is like the last reviews that will be published that are eligible for end of year consideration. Yeah. So that the, the you know, the, the way it works is two, it has to be released. It has to be released before the trade show, but the review has to publish before the 31st. So I have like two more reviews to do before Monday. So I'm a little, I, I, I went through the backlog this month of, of a lot of stuff I had. So mm -hmm. um, I'm kind of going to be glad because I've been writing a lot of reviews this month and I'm just kind of glad to kind of put that aside because it's yeah. been a lot. Yeah, so it's kind of a, a crazy week for me this week on that. Yeah, it's been kind of quiet. Uh, you know, baseball ended on Sunday um, and then nothing so far until this weekend. So, or till Friday, tomorrow, right? Yeah. So, uh, yeah. I mean, it's weird because, um, and we could actually bring Hector on here. You know, we don't just, I'm sure he want to kick in, uh, especially that's tonight's Hector Alfonso. Um, but um, it's weird having this break. And, and what's kind of, as a Phillies fan, and I'm, you know me, and I've been just called doom and gloom. This reminds me of, remember when the Rockies in 2007, they went on that tear and yeah. won the NL? I mean, they knocked us out, they just went on a tear. And they had the long break. Yeah. So the only good news is I think for us is the Astros have had that same long break, which was right. a little different than that Red Sox series that they had that year. So um, from that standpoint, I'm kind of excited that, uh, you know, we, we don't have to deal with that. They, I guess they ha from what I was hearing this week, they have to do that because of the TV. 
contract. It's they couldn't, they don't have the flexibility to start the World Series early, from what I understand. Yeah, I mean, I think they they put so many things tied up with the dates yeah. for TV and just just the normal like all the other stuff that they got set up. Yeah, uh, you know, for the for the cities, for you know, I'm sure Hector could chime in on how they have to coordinate the police for security oh. and all that yeah. stuff. It's yeah, and, nuts. and there's unless there's a natural or weather delay, they are playing. They have got nine days to play seven games. Yeah. Yep. They're one break between game three and four, one break between uh, game five and uh, what is it? Uh, between two and three, and one game between five and six. Yep. Yeah. Yep. But there's no, there's none of that. You know, I was just one of my uh, on Facebook yesterday. One of my memories was on this date in 2003, the Marlins won the World Series. I said we haven't even started the World Series yet, and they <laughs> yeah. played seven games yep. and were done by the by by the end of October. Well, there's a lot of things that went into it. This well, they year. pushed the season. This they pushed the season, and yeah. now you have the extra yeah, round. Yeah, yeah, you have an extra round yeah, to send you. I got you. I mean, you know, it's. I mean, I, I guess there's baseball. My baseball ended for me several weeks ago. So. Uh, <laughs> well, you got uh, congrats to Buck, man. Yeah, I mean, I'm yeah, sure. I mean, Buck, it's not the baseball writer. I'm sure Buck will be sharing. He'll be sharing that trophy with me. Listen, yeah. I mean, you know, I, I'm I like Buck Walter, unlike our other friend who does not like Buck Walter. And yet he and does he like Dusty Baker? He doesn't like Dusty either, right? He I don't think he hates Dusty personally. I just don't think he believes in Dusty. Well, we he, doesn't, he, doesn't, he doesn't like Dusty's uh, pitcher management skills. I don't like Dusty's gloves. Is he doing a home invasion after the game? <laughs> What's with the black gloves after you know the? He, I don't I don't get it. He, uh, that's not a real, that's not a toothpick. That's a lock pick in his mouth. <laughs> <laughs> Let me uh. You know, it, oh, it's kind you of got med- you got a medical lock. <laughs> I got you. Right. It, it, it's kind of funny because you know I've been wanting Dusty to get this World Series ring, right? I really have. Yeah, you, and, you, oh, you look who man- he has to go through to get it. It's like <laughs> you love managers. I'm you are the I, last guy. I, I I am always into the manager. I've always go. This goes back to your management. Of course you are. You're upper management. Your job. You're you know, man. To Billy Martin in, in New York in the late seventies. So I mean, it was, you just get fascinated with these characters. And he was he was the character in New York. Fourth fourth manager of the year for him. One in each decade. Fourth fourth different team he's gotten it with. Yeah, so, you know he. Yeah, good for him. Like I said, he beat. Apparently Thompson finished second in the voting. Well, Thompson. I mean, Thompson's in the World Series, though. Allegedly, they say the postseason has nothing to do with it. Yeah. I wonder where Snicker ended up, or how many votes did Snicker get, and how yeah. many votes did uh, the guy from the Dodgers get, or uh, the guy you guys like, the guy from the Padres. You guys like him. You like Melvin? him. Yeah, you like Bob Melvin. I like Bob Melvin. He just can't get. He can't get past that pump. It seems like. Don't don't blame all of his history on the A's. They could get past. No, but he, he, his fault. Yeah, yeah, really. he, was, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he didn't bring that. He didn't bring that karma with him. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. Yeah. You know, but but uh, you know, I don't think he managed bad against the Phillies. He's, I don't think he had a bad. You know, blame it on Tatis, man. Fuck that guy. Blame it on Tatis. That's the, everybody's blaming it on him. Blame it on the. Sometimes you just run into a buzzsaw, and yeah. that's what happened. The Phillies. Harper has put that whole team on his back. Schwarber's hitting the ball. You've gotten good pitching, I mean, you know, well, decent pitching, enough to win, and you know, and 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 you're and and you're hitting the ball. I mean, if that's why when people are saying the Astros should cakewalk over Philadelphia, listen, the Phillies can hit the ball. At the end of the day, you have to hit the ball. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I guarantee you they won't be blaming the roof open if the ball's going not going. Oh, right oh, listen, I I don't want to hear that bullshit. Oh, it's it, it's been a huge, but let me tell you, <laughs> it's been a huge topic. To- we're going to talk about the Yankees in our second segment a bit. Oh. It has been the big topic in New York that that, the Yankees- that, that franchise has too much history. Its fans have too much history, too many world championships, too much prestige to, to break out the open the roof. That's what and that's what a lot of people, like a lot of pe- like a lot of the sports guys up in New York, the hosts are saying the same thing you're saying, like that you don't need to go down. That you're the Yankee, you don't need to go down that route. You that's know? some you know Texas Ranger kind of excuse. Come yeah, on, yeah, that's yeah. That was pretty lame. That that was pretty lame. Um, but um, no, but. First, you know, great to have you here, Hector, tonight. Glad to be on. Do I get my green jacket now, or will I be fitted? I mean, I, I, this has got to be my 10th appearance on, on your show. I, I got to say, I like you was thinking that you've got to probably be the most times of a guest you've had on, you've been on the show. Uh, 
And, you know, I go back, you know, Hector, it was like about, you know, back with my old podcast, Stogie Geeks, when I, when I sent you that invite, you had never been on. I, I think I did the first interview with you. In well, you know, I, I just, I, well, you know why I had never went on. So, I mean, I was, I was glad to be on. And, yeah. you know, and so now you're like, you know, now you're, uh, you know, I blame Jack Taranya for all this. <laughs> this is all Jack Taranya. So I was very happy in my shell, in my room where nobody knew who I was. And, you know, now I'm, uh, now people want to see me. I don't. I still don't get it. I, I don't get it. You're you're Mr. Warmth. I'm a draw now. Who knew? Who, who knew? Actually, I'm being. I'm. I'm kidding. I'm not. I don't yeah. Consider, but I mean, now yeah. I. It's. I, I. remember the good old days when nobody knew who I was, and I could go into an event, leave an event, not shake the hand, and I was well, happy you, to see. Well, you made the mistake at that smoke in event by introducing yourself to me. <laughs> well, I wanted. To, I wanted to get your opinion. Hey, you like that cigar? Yeah. Um, and then I told you. And you did. It was yeah, and it was funny because you were in the corner. You were literally away from everyone else. I, and I'm like, I mean, and I didn't know who you were. And I'm like, I just figured you were a guy asking me about the cigar. He goes, Oh, I blended this. I'm Hector. I'm like, oh, because because really your face wasn't out there back. This is like 2000. I want to say 15 or so. Your face it was really, 2000. Uh, actually, it was 2000. 2013. 13. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah, because that was a uh, our we started in 2012 and yeah, Bunker Buster was our our first big uh, yeah, our first was... big uh, cigar release. Yep. So it was yep. good, it was good yep. for us. Uh, but I am like about to light up a uh, six hundred one black. Mm. So uh, excited to smoke this. So Aaron, are you smoking tonight? I am not smoking this evening. You're, yeah, it's fine. What are you smoking, Hector? I am smoking. Um, we are doing our own year of series next year. So this is the year of the scout. <laughs> The what? <laughs> I mean, every it seems that everybody is doing a year of cigar. Yeah. So we wanted to do a year of cigars that you know we're really going to embrace our our obscure you know, year of the panda, the year of the goat, uh, you know, whatever weird animal. No, actually, I'm smoking. I have uh, I have several cigars tonight because even though you say it's not a four hour show, I've been here for four hours. With you. <laughs> you have so a bear hat on. <laughs> I have a. Uh, well, uh, <laughs> You're right. Uh, I I have a uh, right now. I'm smoking a I'm smoking a pre-release of the cigar that we did for Pro Protocol that Protocol's doing for the dojo called Tenure. I'm smoking that, uh, and uh, then I've got a six hundred one. I got a Warhead uh, Warhead eight lined up uh, and a knuckle sandwich. I got so I got a Warhead five coming after this. So that's it. that's all those warheads are so good. I mean, yeah. I'm sorry. I mean, they're 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 beyond. I think they're a little better than average. So I mean, they're. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, Aaron agrees. Yeah. Aaron agrees. Thinking oh, about doing a, a Connecticut warhead next year. Now, now you got my attention. <laughs> now I got Aaron's attention. I'm telling you, you guys should do it. But you've done you kind of done a Connecticut version of that, haven't you? With the La Bamba, you did that La Bamba Connecticut. Yeah, but that was a you know that was a one and done. Right. You know, that was just. That was something to have something funky for the people from Mazona to, to enjoy because, you know, we have finally all come to agreement at the company that, yes, people who are your fans want to smoke the most obscure shit you have. And, yeah. You know, I love the blue. I love the red. I love the green. I love the – what is that, the purple? Yeah, I only made eight boxes. Oh, I got to have one. You know, they, they, people love that. Yeah. The inner nerd. The inner nerd is strong. So, you know, I mean, are we not the same way? Are you two guys not the same way? Yeah. Oh, that's yeah. that's nice. Oh, that's production. That's nice. Oh, but this is not production. This is a. Oh, I gotta help. Oh, I know. I mean, there's a couple of cigars I have. I know I've been bugging you about. There's one you know I've been bugging you about for a while. I'm like, when are you gonna release that cigar? And it, this is like six years already. We're going on. Which cigar is that? 601 yellow. Oh, uh, actually, <laughs> you, you'll see it next year. Finally, it's like seven years. He gives me this, so, because you remember you were doing you were doing some of those sick. You did that small release of some of those six hundred ones around FDA, right? Well, we we uh, we like to call it the. It was the. Uh, I, I'm sure Johnny McTavish was watching. It was the Marino fake, the fake spike, where you know <laughs> everybody thinking we were going to spike the ball, and then we threw. We went long. Yeah. So we were very busy that last week of August in 2016. So we were. <laughs> A lot of cigars, as a lot of other companies did. Yeah, yeah, but that was that was really good. That cigar. Yeah, uh, thank you. I appreciate it. It was a six hundred one Mexican. Uh, yeah, the Mexican wrapper on it was. Yeah, really you'll be seeing good. that next year. You'll be seeing. Uh, you'll be seeing uh, the six hundred one orange as well. Uh, you'll be seeing a six hundred one silver. You'll be seeing several. I mean, listen, we've got, we've got a, we've got to do some things for the the the, the lounges, and that's the that's what uh, that's what we're gonna we're gonna address. That's good. That's that's good to hear. Yeah. That's good to hear. 
But you're you're um you've kind of we haven't had you on in a while to really talk to you and talk about Espinosa, right? I mean, you've come on like we do our baseball shows. We appreciate it. You you've come on and you've done uh, you know, was on a Palooza, the virtual trade show. But we really, you know, we, we haven't had a, a good in depth discussion on Espinosa. I think on these shows in a while. But the big change yet, the big change with you personally is um you are you've retired from your other career. Yeah, I'm uh I am now uh. I'm now, yeah, I'm retired. I'm a, I'm just a regular guy like you guys. Uh, <laughs> I'm just, I'm just a regular Joe, you know. Uh, it was. Uh, I'm not going to tell you that it, that it's been easy. It's gotten, it's gotten easier as time goes on. I just went back to my old job last Friday. Uh, for, was it last Friday? Yeah, last right. Friday I went by the old job. It was funny not having clearance and credentials to go upstairs. I had to wait to get walked in. Uh, you know, uh, it was weird. But I saw them, and you know, I, I I'm really glad. I, I'm really glad I pulled the pin when I did. It was time to pull the pin. I I really wanted to go to work at Espinosa full time. I thought the company needed me there full time. I think I needed to be there full time. And I wanted to leave a year earlier, but uh, with COVID and yep. The, the amount of, of work that we were doing as an agency with infrastructure and, uh, you know, COVID, uh, you know, regulate, you know, going out and making sure that people were compliant. And it, it was hard to walk away from that. So, I mean, you know, I, I stayed the extra year, but as soon as I, uh, as soon as I got the chance, I, I pulled the pin and, you know, there is still a Hector Alfonso in the department. Well, that's good to, it's good to know that somebody's still there. And, right. I'm sure he's at the point now where he's tired of hearing, "Aren't you Hector?" Yeah, I mean, now he's. It's it's time for him to be his own man, and and, and he is. He's he's much better. He's gonna. He's a. He'll he'll his career will end much better than mine. That he's uh, twice the man that I was at his age. So. Uh, oh, good for him. Yeah, I think he's gonna be great. So you, listen, I'm, you always want that from your kid. You really do. You, yeah. You always want the best for them, and you, and you always want the best for them. Yeah. He's been, he's been his own man since yeah. he was a young guy. I mean, listen, he's in the sandbox at at 18. That's hard, you know. Oh yeah, it's hard at eighteen to do that. I, you know, one of my sons graduated uh, full sale early, and it was the best thing and it was the worst thing for him because he was thrown into situations way too early that he wasn't ready for. But in the way, he learned from that. You know, he really learned, and you know, it cut it cut helped him really teach him about the real world pretty quickly too. Oh, that's I, I think. Listen, uh, especially the way things are now. I now that I've been retired for a year, I kind of. I'm in the crowd. Instead of looking at the crowd, I'm in the crowd, and I'm looking around, going, "Man, these people are stupid." I mean, <laughs> you, you look at you know, I, I, I used to have you know, used to have the rage. They would feel the feel the rage for you. Yep. Now you're there watching. You're watching the rage, and you're going, "Yeah, I get it. I, yep. I get it." People are just. Uh, it's we're living in some very strange times. How about that? Let me let's let's just say yep. that we're living yep. in some very strange times. Yep. I miss the. I miss the circus. I don't miss the clowns, and the, there's still clowns there. I mean, I, I saw them the other day when I went to the office for the first time in a year. I said, "Oh, yeah, still some, still some, some of the same guys at the big top." But it was a, it was a great career. I, I was very proud of what I did. I, I, I was very, I, I, I had a lot of accolades and accomplishments when I was there. But it was time to go, and and I, and I seem to be doing pretty good in this career. And you know, and. I don't think I'll do 30 here, <laughs> but I think I'll, uh, I think I'm good for another 10, you know, another 10. And then, yeah, and then we'll, that's, you know. a, that's a, that's a hell, you know, it's a good thing too. Uh, um, then I'll, then I'll, you know, thinking about either starting my own media site or a dream team. I haven't decided quite which one I'm going to do, but I'm going to do You can do both. <laughs> I had the over on 30, by team. the way, on that. <laughs> the under. Uh, you, <laughs> I, I meant to say that to you guys beforehand, really. <laughs> Well, you can't tell me because then I could decide to go with the over. <laughs> That's not the first one. I've got several loaded, so go ahead. Oh, yeah, I, I'm sure. <laughs> I was. I knew what. Oh, uh, but you you seem happy. I, it's already. Is it only a year that you retired? I retired in May of. Uh, I retired in May of last year. Oh wow! So, so it's over a year. A year, a year and a half. I'm it just seems like it flew by. It really did. I mean, it really did. Uh, it, it, and this year's really flown by if you think about it. You I know, mean, yeah, I, I, I was just telling you, I'm trying to get down to Miami one more time this year, and it hasn't happened. You know, I thought I was going to be down there more, but I've worked some things out of my day job that I don't have to be down there and still do some stuff on my day job down there. So it's uh, but it's flying. I'm saying I got to get back down there before the end of the year. 
I, I usually that? make that November visit, but but this probably year's going never. by. I mean, it was, it was the new year and the next, and I think it has a lot to do with. I think in our in, on our side of the industry, it has a lot to do with events. You know, you you start projecting. You got TP in January. Yeah. Right? Then for those who go to Puro Puro Sabor or whatever, that one's coming up. Then the guys who go to uh, they go to TAA. Then you have the show. Then between that you have the big smokes, and then you have all these the the Texas Cigar Festival, the Rocky Mountain. These things kind of break up your year. They're they, they do kind of landmarks in your year, and and next year you're just going through them. And then you know you'll well, take then the show, which we're gone for a week. I mean that's a week in the middle of the year that we're gone. Yeah. And then you know we come back, and you know next thing you know, look the holidays, and then the holidays right around the corner, and you don't really do anything in December. The factories close in the middle of December, and and you just kind of uh, bear with it until next till January, and then you start all over again. Yeah, it, it, you know, I, I'm amazed that like, like I said, we just talking. I was just saying I'm finishing up the what's going to be eligible for my list, and it's the end of October. But it seemed like I just finished PCA coverage. You mean your list is not out already? <laughs> it's, not, it's not done yet. <laughs> no, I already saw some guy who has his list out already. There's a, yeah, one guy had his list out already. I uh. You know whose list I'm waiting for? I'm waiting for the Meow Man's list. That's my favorite. <laughs> that's, the, that's my that's my favorite list. You know, let's see who the big sponsor is this year. <laughs> hey, hey, let me tell you though. Uh, you gotta say it. Uh, the Developing Palettes guys last year, big year for Espinosa on it. I was, I I don't want to say I was pleasantly surprised. I was shocked because <laughs> I talked to this salty fucker every day. <laughs> and hey, go, hey, what what do you think of that? It was all right. I mean, either, either he's playing me or he just refuses to wear his heart on his sleeve. You don't know where he's going. And when you're playing with the developing palace guys, you're just kind of throwing shit against the wall and see what sticks. I throw it up against the one. I go, for sure, it's always going to hit McTavish. McTavish is always going to like it. Uh, Seth, I don't know if he's on the peyote or whatever he's on this week. I don't know how he's feeling it. June? I don't. Is June still in the industry? I don't even know if June's here anymore. I haven't seen June in like two years. No, he, he does the videos. Is. He does the videos. And then, and then, I never know. I just never know with with Aaron. I mean, I think Aaron just does it on purpose. He's he's very low key about it. Yeah. It was right. I have to maintain my reputation. Yeah. Your reputation's not going anywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Yeah. You know. And I, I, I'm not gonna mess with your reputation. I mean, I'm not even gonna start about your last show that you were on. <laughs> Let me put you in the hot spot. All right. So anyway, uh, oh, did, he get, did he get off soft or what on that well, one? I wouldn't use soft and her and Aaron in the same sentence. But, uh, <laughs> well, that's what she said. Uh, yeah. Let me tell you something. I mean, it's funny. The funny thing is that I've never been on the show. Jack's been on that show. Uh, now Aaron's been on that show, but it's the same. I've been on. And you've been on. I think if whenever I find out who the next guy is. I would like to reach out to him and have him start his dialogue by answering all five of Jose's first questions. Oh, come on. You're picking on Jose. Come on. Don't do that. It's his birthday. I don't give a shit. I'd like to. <laughs> Sorry, I'd like Jose. It's like not his birthday like, anymore where he lives. Oh, that's right. You're good. So I'd like to start it like this. Hector, welcome to this. Welcome to the professor. You know, and he's talking to me like this. And then Marifel, who talks like Bono. But it's such a pleasure to have you. You know, and then I thought, hey, look, I'm so happy to be on here. I remember my first cigar. You know, boom! I hit him with the first cigar <laughs> question, and I hit him with all the four, those four, 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 five, and just hit him like with a with a little diatribe there for a minute or two, and then watch him go looking for pages. I don't have a second page in quite. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm actually what I'm trying today. I'm trying to do my best interview ever. You know, so next time Aaron is asked who a good interview is, he'll say, "Oh, Hector Alfonso is a good interview." Yeah, yeah he went straight. Aaron went straight chalk with the interview. He went Saka and Martin. He went straight chalk. <laughs> but it was that was not the way the question was asked, from what I understand. Hey, hey, hey! You got to pick a side, brother. <laughs> you got to pick a side. You, you know, I gotta, I gotta do a show on Sunday with Bear and Saka. I, I've taken the next day off, by the way. From, I, yeah, you better. So cancel my morning meetings is what I did. I said because that show is gonna go long. And so, so uh, when we get to the topic of things that bother me, we'll we'll touch on that. <laughs> <laughs> Everything bothers me, you, you know. Uh, but no, I mean, I think, uh, like I said, um, you know, you had three cigars on the developing it, it palette. So, so I think there's a, there's a lot of good stuff that's been happening. I it's I'm telling you, I was very shocked. And then you know, it's not having it's, it's the the 
the issue is not having the three cigars on there because we're very happy to have them on there. Right. It's having to explain the rating system to the guys who ask me, what does that mean? Is that good? Yes, it's good. Don't worry about it. Just tell them that you had three on the list. That's all that matters. The That's list all you have. No, but they're curious because, you know. I thought I was going to walk into the booth and I was going to see the big developing pallets. Three, three down there. I didn't see that. <laughs> I was, uh, you know, so I was hoping I was going to be there. All right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you like I always say. What's the name of our company? Espinosa Cigar. Okay, so then you got to, you got to refer those questions to the guy named Espinosa. <laughs> I handle the stuff I handle. I handle well, and I have it under, under wraps. Yeah. I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I, can't, I did like this year's booth a lot better than last year's booth. Is what I'll just tell you. You like this year's booth? Much better than the design of last year's booth. <laughs> I'm trying to think, what was the design of last year's? Last year's was the open concept. That was cool. Yeah, the open. Uh, I didn't like the backdrop in that booth. I don't think we'll ever go with the backdrop again. Yeah, uh, I didn't like. I I, I, I I really think the booth really looked. Good. It had a little more of a. It, it just had. A, it, this had more of a trade show feel to it, you know. And I think you had to redesign the booth, obviously, with 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 Guy. I mean, I think. Um, it worked out really well. And by the way, Hector, um, I don't know if we've said this on the show to you. I know I've said it to you person, personally, but great job, by the way, with the Espinosa team in managing the whole guy for everything. I mean, that was that was well done. Uh, it was it was not without its uh, its headaches. <laughs> and and listen, I'm gonna and and I'll just I'll start off just by saying uh, when you're we have celebrities in our industry. And then you have guys who transcend the industry, and they are they're they're on a different plane when it comes yeah. to what their problems are and their concerns are, and and you don't really you don't really realize it until you're with them. My son took my son. You you met my you saw my son at the show. My son yeah. came, mm-hmm. took some days off uh, to be his body man. Yeah, walking around the show floor. Yep. And he told me he goes, Pop, this guy can't take ten steps. Ten steps. He can't take ten steps without somebody in his face. I love you. I want a picture. Can you get sign a boob? You know, whatever. They they're just you know things that we could never imagine. Listen, you you know the kind of personality I have. Can you imagine if somebody every five minutes asked me to to, to shake their hand or sign something? I would lose my shit. Yeah. But yet he's on and 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 he's been he's been very good for the brand. He's been very good for the company. He's very good for the cigar. He's been a great ambassador. Yeah. Uh, um, I, I sat there in awe, even though I was freaked out by the amount of people in our booth. He just, you know, they're just coming through. People are yeah. just coming through, and he's signing, and, and he's remembering shit, and he's talking to people, and yeah, he's a celebrity. Listen, and then the guy tried to sit down and have a hamburger, and it was it was impossible. I mean, we had yeah. to put velvet ropes around him, and it looks bad. Maybe somebody will come by and go, oh, my God, look. Yeah. At that. He's just trying to have a yeah. burger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, like, I, I was actually wondering if you, like, if they could have one, I was like, if you had a booth maybe at the edge where he could sneak out the back or something like that, that would have been like maybe something. And I, I don't got, know. We'll yeah. see. I, I don't know. Did we lose him? The yeah, terrible, the hamster, uh, the hamster the tech there. Hamster stopped on the audio. The hamster stopped on the. Huh? For folks who don't know, uh, Hector's internet setup is is controlled by a gerbil, and that gerbil. Oh, because it's not. <laughs> there Are you there? there? I'm yeah, sorry. yeah, we're here. You we lost your. Lost hey, just lot. remember, our, our, I'm very close to Cuba, and they're constantly the communists are constantly jamming us here. So, you know, <laughs> well, I was blaming the gerbil. And, and remember, when anything has to do with, if it's not Cuban tobacco, they don't want it. They don't want it publicized. Uh-huh. So, I mean, he walked around the booth and he saw. I mean, his first exposure to the to a cigar event was at Abe's, the Great Smoke, which and is I was a there, great I saw event. It, and I saw him there too. Which is a great event. But it's a localized. It's a local event, even though people fly in from all over. It's still a local event. He was. Trade he was. Show. You would ask, and he was surprised at the. I think the depth of that event. You know how big it was. Well, and then he was more surprised at the trade show. Yeah. Because he got to see. You know, now you're dealing with retailers. At, at Aves, you've got mostly consumers. Now you've got retailers. These are the guys who are interested in bringing in your cigar, who who want to meet the guy behind the cigar. And when it comes to celebrity cigars, listen, you guys, we've talked about this before. You know that there have been plenty of celeg- attempts at celebrity cigars. They want to see if this guy's legit, and he's legit. Yeah. He's legit. Oh yeah. I mean, it definitely. Uh, it people have been talking about it. Um, and I think, like I said, I, I actually think, like I said, it was very well organized. 
if you if it wasn't organized, Hector, you did a good job at making it seem like it was organized. Eric, but, Eric, Eric brought in a couple of his friends to help run the line. Plus, you've got you know you've got Jack, who's you know Jack's six foot five and an opposing figure, and then you you have the, our young our our guys who are reps who are young guys. So I mean, we really wrangled. Yeah. Yeah. I tried to stay awake because I don't want to put my hands on anybody. I'm just, <laughs> yeah. I, don't, I don't want to get checked in anything. I just, you know, and, and, that guy. I don't want to get involved in any of that. <laughs> yeah. No, but but even the second half of the show, you didn't have Eric there because Eric had gone. Didn't Eric, Eric go back? Yeah, Eric was having Eric was having the moment of his lifetime. Yeah, so he had to go back. Was going. Yeah, so he left on the last day. But the last day was pretty calm. I mean, we we still had you guys. I think Aaron sat down for like an hour at our booth. Yep. And, uh, you know, it was a little slow for the show floor was a little slow, but we were busy until till the show ended. Yeah, no, it was definitely uh, like we came over. We came over in between the guy appearances, I think. Um, and, you know, like I said, it was still plenty of uh, plenty of activity there for sure. Um, and you had a, you had a lot this year at the trade show. And, yeah. you know, and Hector, normally I'm the guy like who hates limited editions, right? I'm always I've, I've been accused of shitting on them. Right? right. But you had you had five this year. And I think they were all compelling Hector in a different but they, way. But they had to be. I think we had this conversation at the booth. Yeah. It's known as 10th anniversary. Yeah. Did you not put out something to celebrate their 10th? Yep. I mean, if it's their eighth, you know, if we put out an eighth anniversary, you could go, Come on, you know, bro, you really yep. didn't have to know. Yep. But a 10th is a milestone. It was yeah. Eric's. It was our company's tenth anniversary yeah. as a company. So we put a cigar out, uh, Knuckle Sandwich, which had already been doing very well for us. So what do you do? You bring out a limited at the show, to, to you know, to, to bump up sales even more of the core. Uh, keeps and, it keeps interest in the brand. I thought that was good. And then we have the ones that we always put out. How do I not put out a warhead? How do I not put out a warhead? You know, it, it, Warhead's been. There was one year I think you skipped the Warhead, if I'm not. We mistaken. had to, and it was the year of Laranja, because yeah. Laranja, the year after Laranja, because Laranja just so overwhelmed everything. Right. And we actually thought, well, maybe Warhead's dead, and then people were like, well, where's the new Warhead? Yeah. So came out with a new Warhead. Uh, you know, we we had to release those, and then the six provinces. We had to release six provinces. There's only actually two more provinces to do after that. Uh, <laughs> You know, maybe we'll do the fifty states. I don't know. What, I don't know what we're what we're going to work on. We might work on something new, but these are cigars that after certain after a few years, the retailers expect to see the new the new iteration of it. Yeah. And, and I and I think nowadays, especially when when cigar sales are still booming, or I'd say seventy five percent of the companies' cigar sales are still booming because there are some guys who are struggling. The some of the tip of the spear guys who uh, who are who you know who were caught short at the beginning and you know haven't been able to catch up. That when you don't have that cigar that you release every year, there are questions. Well, why didn't you release Warhead? Oh well, you know we just thought that we had the other. One. Well, you know Warhead does very good in my shop. What do you answer to that? What do you tell that guy? You know, so you have to release it. You know, I'm I'm more worried about the Warhead in two years. What are we gonna do? Warhead X? I'm gonna have it's gonna be a problem. I'm gonna I'm gonna have to put just. Uh... <laughs> was right, big ten. Well, after you, you could have talked to Jose after you knocked it. <laughs> well, he is. Maybe, maybe when he has me on, I'll have Melanie get the okay for that. <laughs> no, but uh, I mean, it's a warhead. You know, you're up to eight, and it's you know, there's some lines that have, and I've talked. Aaron and I have talked about this. I've talked about some of the other hosts that I think it's time for the lines to retire, right? But there's no slow. I don't think Warhead is in that boat yet. Whether you, you know, and everyone may not like every Warhead like me, but, um, you know, sometimes I, I think we keep it. I don't think that still. We change the art every year. We change the size every year, and then every size every year we change the size. There's always that question in the conference room. Well, trust me, six by sixty. Oh man, six by six, six by sixty. We're gonna go through. Them. People are gonna smoke it, and. The Lancero was the one that really. Oh my God, people are. I think I, I think it's one of the best Lanceros I've had. You know, it's it's really, it was really, and that was the one that got you a top five for me, Hector. Yes, yes. Well, we, we were talking about Hector had a top, he did have a top five with that one. So, and uh, you know, and, and that was I thought I said Hector, this is. Re I remember I remember the night I smoked that. Um, too, I was literally like in the same spot I am now. Yeah. 
12 minutes. In the garage. <laughs> well, no, literally in the same spot. And I normally used to be in the other bay, but for some reason I was in this bay when I smoked it because um, I moved the bays a couple of years ago. Um, but, yeah, so you went with a 60 this year. And uh, is Warhead – are you guys sold out of Warhead? Or is it going to be any more – I think we're down to our last uh, – we, we did – we had so many things this year. Yeah. So we only did about – I think I did 25, 2,000 or 2,500 boxes. We're down, we're down to the last 500 boxes. Right. That'll be gone. Uh, those, will, those will be gone in, in the next two months. And then uh, Chef Special. We did a limited number of Chef Special. They sent us the first batch. We sent those out to, to where we were doing events and, you know, the lounges. And now we've got another shipment coming. And those, we have, we have more on back order than we have coming in. So we've got to do that. We got to do that Sophie's Choice thing. Oh, well, you've got, you have, you asked your father, you're going to get three. Are you okay with that? Right. All right, cool. Let's move on. Yeah. Look, it's a great problem to have. Yeah. It's a great is, problem is, to have. Is Chef Special something that you can do another run of if you wanted to? Or is We're it just simply? Do... No. <clears throat> well, he loved, he liked the whole idea of Chef Special so much so yeah. that he's already requested what next year chef special he he requested what the design for next chef special oh, oh wow but could you let's say you let the one you did now that blend is that something that's retired or is that something that you could maybe no i i don't think i'll use that blend again i mean okay. I'll, I'll use i'll use another type of blend like that which is a little milder mm -hmm. i like to, i i always think the le's or the stuff that's that you're that you're pushing to to kind of get the rest of the stuff in there i think that should be a little more palatable it's not the right word but it should be a little more uh, accepting yeah. something a little more that 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 hits that dead center there. So uh, what I'll do is next year I'll change the blend a little bit. I'll make it round. Uh, I might use a different wrapper. You know I don't I don't want them to be I don't ever want them to be identical. I don't want that one to be identical. Yeah, you did that. You did that Figurado. Uh, was that done? At, was that the one you guys did up to San Latino? Or did you do that one in Lozona? No, we did that at San Latino. That but, that yeah. Figurado. That Figurado. I smoked. And I know a lot of people didn't like it, but I really like that Bay of Oh, I was just gonna say that's where because that, that's why I asked. I thought that was the same size. And I and I thought I thought it was very daring of them to box press it, so I I wanted it box pressed. Eric had Eric had a bit of a concern about the box pressing. He's always a little worried about box pressing because you know whatever reason you know I mean if 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 it's gonna it might get plugged or this that and the other. Uh, mostly operator error because people know how to cut it, how to light it. They just they see that little nipple on there and they just want they want to suck on that thing and you know destroy the cigar but uh the figurado i i love that i love that size and and we went with it i think you're gonna we're, you're gonna see a you're gonna see a funky size in warhead nine next year ah now is uh it was habano though the chef special right it was so why is there a concern <laughs> habano he had a bono i like, you know, get he loves Habano, man. Listen, for the first time ever, I blended a Habano that I really love. <laughs> I really love that Espinosa tin. I love that Espinosa tin. Um, the, 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 I can tell you that Ben and Nielsen are going crazy on that cigar right now. I'm, I'm, I, and, and even he walked into my office yesterday or the day before, and he goes, that tin's doing pretty good. <laughs> yeah, that, that, that tin's doing very good. Right. It's, it's delicious. It really is. And now, you know, here's a concern. Do I'm, I'm, I've been thinking, do I, there are several manufacturers who have a 10th or 20th anniversary that they bring out every year. It's, just, it's a, you know, do we, can we keep bringing out the Espinosa 10 in our 11th year? Will that be a concern? Will that be a problem? Uh, will that be received well? Because I just think it's a great cigar. Maybe I'll just keep the same blend and I'll box press it instead of having it round. Right. I'm, 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 I'm trying to bounce these things and I got to get it done soon because Come January, you have to have everything in the queue and everything ready for, for what we're going to do in July. Yeah, no, um, it's uh, you guys for the most part have kept your LEs as LEs. I mean, I'm thinking of the Seis Provincias, obviously, and um, you know, obviously each warhead pretty much has been that like that. So you guys have kept kept the LEs. I think very limited. You haven't done that. They but I don't know. Do you, is it? I mean, should should the tenth become a core? I mean. Doesn't Rocky have a 10th anniversary or a 20th anniversary? A, a lot of people come out with it, – It's not unusual. Year designations and stuff yeah. like that. So, And it, it gives you the option. You could do limited production every year of it, like come out with it once a year. You know, so that gives you some – you know, then it's still kind of special, I think, that way. 
I really, I, I, for years, I've been telling you guys that I always thought we were, that we, we, we cleared our first hurdle with Laranja. Laranja Reserva was our first yep. speed bump cigar. It's the first cigar that got us, you know, that put us on the map as a brand new company. Because Eric had been on the map already. Yeah. Six hundred one blue and six hundred one red. Uh, and I think that I'd say since last year. We, I think that we've really, we, we're, we're really on a, we're kind of like, we're rolling, uh, almost to the point that we were rolling too much. Like you said, I mean, five releases is a lot of new releases to have at the show. It, it was, I, but at least I guess, yeah. You would be hard pressed to find a company of our size that had five releases. A company of any size that had five. Right. I know there were some that had five releases. Yeah. But for a company of our size to have five releases is a ballsy move. Yep. So, when will we? Because I when will we see Seis Provincias? I think you will see six provinces by the end of the year. Okay, because it's, I it's I, very, I did have, that was one I did have a chance to smoke, and I thought it was. I, saw, I the, the box is complicated. Putting the art is complicated. The cigars have been done. That's the beauty of it. When the cigar when they put those cigars in the boxes, it's, it's good. The cigars are going to be phenomenal. I mean, you guys smoked it in July and you loved it. What's it going to taste like now in November? I mean, that's what yeah. I'm. Well. That's a good job with that. Thank um, you. We had a limited last year. I'm smoking it now, the black. Um, what's the status of 601 black? Will we see another run of 601 blacks at some point? Because that seemed to be very po- – that, that went very good for you guys when you released it. Well, here's the thing. We, we, had, we did two runs. We did the very first run of 601 black, and they sold out immediately. And then we had another production run, and – you know, this is, is it good luck? Is it bad luck? I don't know how to explain it. Maybe you guys can help. It, it kind of, what happened to 601 Black, the second run of 601 Black, is that it caught, it got caught in the jet stream of Knuckle Sandwich. You did. It did. So, will you see it again? Yeah. We've, we've got more coming. I think Azulejo would have happened to Azulejo too. I think Azulejo, Azulejo is one of those cigars that is just, hasn't, it hasn't gotten that tipping point yet. The it, it takes a while. A it takes a little while to build that up, and I think I, and I'm not knocking it. It's it's a good problem to have, I guess. But Knuckle Sandwich kind of came along and really, you know, obviously. It's, it's like, just Asulejo. Os- Oscuro was in, Oscuro was in the same boat. Oscuro was kind of like dying on the vine there because people really love the Laranja Reserva, and then somebody gave it a number one. I mean, Snob gave it a number one, and then we couldn't keep it in stock. Yeah, and it, and it really has not lost any steam since since the year before last. Yeah. I think uh, my issue with Osolivo is it just needs it needs to get that tipping point where the right guy or the right you know the right media guys smoke it and promote it and it gets out there and it gets in the right hands and and next thing you know it kind of takes off on its own. Yeah. We we had that issue with Musielago. We have that issue with Musielago like every year. There'll be a time of the year where man, Musielago is not moving. And then we can't. Then we can't. Then we're out of it. And then you know. Then we're back ordered on it. Then yeah. it comes in, and then we catch up. And they, I mean, it's just I don't know. I I, I don't know how to. I don't know I, how to. I, do have, a, I have a question. Who, who's yeah. the right media site to give a yeah, good? Yeah, that's a good it? question. I, right? It was it was number six on the development balance list. So I'm just and curious. it may appear on the coop list this year. You never know. Yeah, but the, for Asu, let me rephrase that. No, 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 no. no. I, I got it. I, I understand. No, but you know what I'm, ta- I'm talking about the, the the mass appeal ones. Look, I think that you guys, and, and I told you guys in private, you're you digging a deeper hole, Hector. <laughs> no, no, no problem. Listen, I I look at it this way. I think that yeah, the developing palette site made your list. It also Coop might make this year's list. But for Coop, for let's use Coop's list as an example. If it hits your list this year, maybe, maybe it'll it'll bump up a little bit after it hits your site. But it's already been out there for a year and a half. It's it, not. It, I yeah, think not get that. I, that cigar needs to get that bump from the moment it comes out. But I think I, I think if it gets another bump, like if it gets a few bumps in a row, like like I would hope more media people review that this year. And I, mean, I think that's what it is. Not everybody look not, uh, of the let's say the average the average cigar nerd might look at your site and then look at how about that cigar site, and then the other one might look at his site and look at another site. If, if I had you know that's why I, I I've always pressed that man if we could get these out in time that everybody could review it at the same time then you know they can go oh shit look it's on the it's on the it's the third review in the last two months on the cigar maybe i should go out and try it 
the problem is they're kind of staggered and that's and you can't really i can't put a gun to anybody's head and say hey you got to review this this month hey yeah. i need you to review it. you can't do that no that's true that it's tough. You guys I, I that. yeah but i i think that uh the only real pl places that will that can do that for you is the, um gonna be the, the magazines mostly because magazine. they, they, they'll, yeah. they'll go they'll they do older stuff yeah mostly online guys you know coop's got a different you know criteria for the two-year thing but most sites yeah, after the year's done and they did, if they didn't get to it they're not coming back to it they're on to other yeah the new stuff so. there's only two cigars there's only two companies that keep getting their 20 year old cigars reviewed and you know, and they still do great and yeah. listen i can't rag on those companies because at the end of the day we all want to be as successful as those two companies and as prestigious as those two companies but you know I picked up a magazine the other day, and I saw I saw I saw a cigar that I smoked when I was in my twenties. Yeah. Wow, they're reviewing that. Where, where the hell has that been? Where's that cigar been hiding for the last thirty years? Yeah. You know, yeah. it's it's good to be a it's good to be an oldie in a favor. You know, yeah. we'd like to get there. Yeah, no, um, I agree. Um, but yeah, Azaleo, I think you know, and it's a very good blend, by the way, Azaleo. I, it's I, my I, favorite of the, all the Laurentians. Yeah, I, 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 and I love that never, you were right. The Gordo was my size on that one. You've never seen. I don't smoke. Any Laranja Reserve, because in my mind, in my mind, I remember us in an 800 square foot warehouse with no. I've no, been there. No, I was no, at that warehouse. I know. The first warehouse that we had, yeah. we had no cigars to sell. So it pains me that that was our, you know, that was our very first cigar that really took off. I can't smoke it. I just, I just feel bad at cracking a box and grabbing a cigar. I, I, I feel bad. You know, the Oscuro I like a lot, but the, the Oscuro is my favorite. But it just hasn't, you know, it, it just hasn't taken off the way, it hasn't taken off yet the way we want it to, but I'm sure it will. Everything in time, bro. This is, you know, the, the yeah. one thing about, the one the one thing that we know about this industry that we don't know anything about it. You know, one cigar can just take off and next thing you know, it's, 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 on, it's on fire. Yeah, no, it's true. It's true for sure. No. Azaleo, that was created because at the time you guys were having trouble getting the Laranja wrapper. Is that problem been solved right now? Well, yeah, we just we we have enough, I think, probably for one more run, and then I've got to start. I've got to start looking for wrapper pretty soon. Okay. Because you know we we didn't have it for like eleven months, ten to yeah. eleven. Months, we didn't have it, and now this year we've been able to make uh, seven thousand, eight thousand boxes. And I just got another. I just got a shipment in. I just got a thousand boxes in yesterday, in all sizes except one. So I got Coronas, Corona Gordas, Lanceros, Toros, Robusta Extras. But I don't have the Kaixa, which, in my opinion, is the best of the Laura. I, I I agree. I think yeah, it's I, the I, best. I, Eric will Eric will fight. And he'll argue, and maybe he might want to put hands on people. The Toro for that. I don't agree. I think it's this one. But that's. I think that's the beauty of our company. At the end of the day, that none of us agree on shit. We all have our all. None of us have ever said this is the size that we like or that. We all we all have different size. We all have different preferences. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. And then you like my rocking chair. Am I freaking you guys out with my old man rocking chair here? I love it's it. It's freaking okay. Jack Toronto out for sure. Why is Jack? Does, Jack doesn't like it. He said he's getting seasick. No, he's, he's, he's the, between that and the, the wind. <laughs> yeah, between that, are you hearing a lot of wind? We were earlier, not now. Yeah. Uh, well, between that and driving with Tony Gomez, he's probably he's probably out of his mind right now. <laughs> yeah, that's. <laughs> uh, so no, that's good news. At least for now, you got some Laranja, but obviously it's something you're gonna address. Address, you know. Jack will only worry if we don't have any crema. If we don't have any crema, then Jack will be concerned. But by the way, uh, our boy Bear de Pussy got me hooked on that box press crema. The greatest secret in Espinosa cigars is that box press crema. Yeah, that's what he said. Um, I don't know. I don't know it's what. Fantastic. Bear, <laughs> that's not in his top ten this year. I, well, let's let's hope and pray. It, the only way to guess bear, what Bear's list is is you have to know what he's smoking, and he tends to send me cigars. So that's popped up uh, one or two times. So I don't want to speak for him, but so it's funny because he'll tell me, "Hey, I just ordered a box from Allen." I already knew that because Alan told me the day before. Hey, your bear's the guy in Texas. So he's, bu he's buying it. That's what I'm saying. He's buying that cigar. That's a key thing. He loves it. Yeah. I just don't know how he's doing line extensions and stuff like that. I don't want to put words in, uh, but I I believe it's he it's it's eligible. So I'm just gonna you know, but it, I I actually really did like that crema box press as well. A different cigar. Listen, I think I there there's a lot of lines that we have that I'd love to do line extensions on. 
you know, I think, look, I, one of my favorite cigars in our portfolio is the 601 Green. And I don't know. Uh, but that, that Perfecto is great. The punta, the, yeah. La Punta. But, you know, I think that's a cigar that would really, you know, uh, the 601 Blue was an established cigar for years. All the, the five sizes established. Yep. I kind of bamboozled Eric into make, letting us do a short Churchill. And the short Churchill's really done well. And I think a short Churchill would really do well in the Toro, in that green. And so would a Toro, because that cigar comes in two different Robusto sizes. Yeah. It comes in a Robusto and a Robusto Extra. But th those were all made prior to prior to, to, to Eric having the company by himself. Yeah, but, 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 green, we'll see. My, but the Oscuro, the green is a very underrated line. By very the underrated cigar. I've always liked the green. I, I've always liked like the green, um, for sure. Um, you know, talking about rappers, you guys have made some. I've noticed you guys are using more Nicaraguan broadleaf right now. You've used it on the last couple of warheads. Um, is that kind of the new direction you're going in with Nicaraguan broadleaf? Any chance we'll see Connecticut broadleaf back? Listen, I we we do our broadleaf at AJ's place, and. Uh -huh. You gotta, you gotta trust the man. The man's use. He's growing Nicaraguan broadleaf. It's good. Uh, I. The last thing I would want to hear is I can't make it because I don't have any wrapper. Right. So we made the change. It's accept. It's, it's uh, accessible. And shit, my automatic lights went off. Hold on a second. <laughs> <laughs> what an old. The, gerb, a, the, the, the gerbil is working overtime. No, no, I've got everything hey. on timer. <laughs> Man, look, just, you just clap a couple times. I don't have a clapper out here, bro. <laughs> you may so uh, the 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 Nicaraguan broadleaf it, it didn't miss a beat. You guys, when we when we released the uh, when we released the the warhead sampler, we went back and all, all of those have Nicaraguan broadleaf on it. Well, and, nobody... and I did notice I did notice that because I remember I think I asked you that and you said yeah. Because I the warhead two, it was it was good, it was good, but I just said it didn't taste like the Connecticut one. I I, I am happy it. to be able to use broadleaf because you already know my arguments and yeah. my beef with my with the boss about rap. So I mean, just the fact that we have anything with broadleaf, you know, I you've done well with it. You've done well with it. Yeah, it's I seen... think my work here will be done the day that I can do a Pennsylvania broadleaf. <laughs> <laughs> didn't you do? Didn't you do one? Not I thought you guys did. We okay, did it I thought you... somebody else. But not yeah, for us. yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, that... yeah. I'm trying to think. I don't think there's a rap. Oh, there's only one rapper that I haven't worked with yet. Two. I haven't worked with Corojo. We haven't done anything with a Corojo rapper. And we haven't done anything without a Pinaka as a rapper. But we've done, I think, every other. I can't think of a rapper that we haven't used. We've used Havano. We've used Cameroon. We've used Sumatra. Uh, we've used Dark Havano, Havano Rosado, Havano Claro. Uh, let's see. Candela, Connecticut. I made some I made some stuff with uh, for Cominis and Anthony back in the day that had Connecticut shape. Uh, the, the US. The US, you know. Yeah. So I I I we've worked with everything. I mean it's just the uh, Mexican, we've done stuff with Mexican, so I'm trying to think and, and you know, Eric was one of the really early guys to start putting those on a premium cigar, you know, back with the old six one days. Uh, the, People, yeah, you, know, you mean you're talking about uh, the, the Mexican? The Murcielago. When the Murcielago, yeah, he that was. was big, he yeah. he brought he brought that wrapper to the manufacturer of that cigar. Oh, I know. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, he, he you know, because yeah. it was the world's. It's, and it's still it's still today the world's worst kept secret of. Yeah. <laughs> still, you know what wrapper the uh, that, that 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 is. I mean, I love it. I, I love. I I'll love say, so you, you guys kind of were at the beginning when people kind of came out of the shell. Saying well, you're the Mexican, like for, it was that denial. You you denied it, like uh, oh sure, there was still that there was that whole Te Amo cloud hanging over yeah. your head. You know, oh Mexican, <laughs> Mexican rapper is delicious. Yeah, so no, you guys, that's something I know you guys have worked with for a while. Have you worked with Criollo at all? Oh, I mean, all isn't all rapper isn't all rapper that's not Corojo Criollo. True, I guess you could say that. I guess you could say that, yeah. But you haven't done Corojo. That's interesting. I have not done Corojo. Okay. It's it's something I have in, in the queue. Maybe not for yeah. this year. But you haven't done. You, would you ever like? Would you have? You did Cameroon with the War Zone. Yes. Um, but was it? But you haven't done it with Espinosa. No, we haven't done it with with Espinosa. Okay. But there. 
it, it wouldn't be fair to the Warzone project for us to do a, a Cameroon cigar right. to compete with the cigar that we're doing for, for General. Right. It, it wouldn't be fair. I mean, you know, it's, at the end of the day, this business is really about relationships. Yeah. And that would really well, Warzone be- is coming to a close, right? Yeah, Warzone. This last was this last iteration was it. What What was that decision to bring it to a close? Was that just Secretary General well, saying? I, no, that was the General's plan. Anymore. Was supposed to be three three years. It was going to be three releases. Okay. It ended so, up being the, it ended up being four releases because we did a a Churchill. Well, I'm sorry, we did a Robusto Notoro, then we did a Churchill, and then we did a Robito. So I mean, we did four. But it was three releases, so it fits in the Justin trilogy model. Everything with Justin is trilogy. Listen, <laughs> trilogies work. I mean, you know, <laughs> he did, and even I was saying the uh, what well, was his Sunday gravies? He did two trilogies because there was six. Everything with Sin does is then threes. Listen, I will not sit here while you guys rag on Justin. Let me get up for a minute. You guys go ahead. I'm still waiting for. <laughs> by the way, we're still waiting on some cigars from him. Just so you know, yeah. like, like you know. <laughs> I am here to talk about Espinosa, sir. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. We'll get back to the Espinosa. I cannot stuff. talk to you about my good friends in general. Yeah, no, no, that's good. That's good. Uh, but uh, it seemed like a, it was a good project for you guys, right? I mean, it, I think, did you feel you guys got out of it what you guys were looking for, kind of the broaden the Espinosa name? Do you feel you got got that out of that? I think we did. Yeah. I mean, Jack could probably Jack could probably be more specific with with how it might have impacted sales since he yeah. visits a lot more shops than I do. As just good Justin, but I can tell you that I know they were happy because it gave them. Uh, it got them in the top 25, and they hadn't been in the top 25. I think they hadn't had a cigar rated that high in the top 25 in a while. Yeah. So it was it was nice for them as well. Yeah. Uh, you know, listen, dealing with any limited is a problem. Yeah. Because you know your shelf space is always at a premium. So you know where where Warzone did well, it did very well. Where it didn't where it didn't do well, it's not not around. Yep. But listen, we know we know for sure that there were many accounts that had to open general accounts to get it. And that's what General wanted. And for us to be able to be in shelves on stores that really norm- that normally wouldn't carry us helped as well. I mean, that's, yeah. a, that's a good thing. That's good. And like I said, it was kind of cool to see you guys get out of your comfort zone, you know, with the camera, not, you know, or Eric's comfort zone, you know, outside of bio, and put something out with a camera. I mean, I think it was that was a good thing. Did we lose him again? Looks like it. Uh, so uh, again, we uh, Hector. You know the gerbil has been working a lot of overtime tonight here on the prime. He is. Oh, I'm is. sorry. I don't know. It says <laughs> my my internet connection is unstable. Maybe they're talking about me. I'm sorry. <laughs> so, so you were saying it was it was nice to get out of Eric's comfort zone. Yeah. Listen. Even if, at the end of the day, even he admitted it was a pretty good cigar. Yeah. I mean, no, it was. It was I, like- I can't. I, I I fuck with him a lot. I rag on him a lot. But you like what you like. Do you are you a pizza guy, Coop? Yeah. You like anchovies? Yeah. I don't. Right. I, but exactly. I mean, exactly. I mean, and then and, and, and that's fine. I, I it's you've got to respect other people's other people's choices. No, and, other, and I I agree. Uh, and you know? it's still like you said, whose name's on the company? So, and if his company, listen, yeah, I work for him. I'm glad to work for him. If yeah. I if I didn't work for him, I would not be in this industry. He was yeah. the guy who found me. Who you know, and I and I and I told him not too long ago. I said, listen, any success that I've that I've accomplished or accumulated over these last years, they're directly responsible. They, they they should be your successes as well. I mean, he got he picked he took his son out of out of the shop. He took me out of the shop. Uh, he brought he's brought in Richie and Jack, who already was established. But everybody has come in, and 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 we've all gotten to work for him, and it's been great. Yeah, and like I said, I I remember I went to visit Eric in that small warehouse. This was 2012. 2012. We opened in February. Right. February. I think I went. To, I think I went there in June. Um. So I, he was only there four months. And and look, that 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 smoking area was smaller than the booth that you had at the trade show. So I remember how small that warehouse was. That, we were on top of each other by July. Yeah. I, by the by the time we went to the show, we had that humidor built in there. We were on top of each other. Yeah. And then, then we grew, we've grown into the place that we have now. Yeah. Who knows how long we could stay at this place? I mean, this place might be good for another two or three years, yeah. and then we might need to go somewhere else. I mean, it's it's all of you know. We'll see what happens. Listen, we are we are riding the wave. I think that a lot of pieces fell into place when you know when this second this last boom started. I think uh, 
I was having this conversation with Alan just a, just a couple of days ago because a lot of companies didn't do very well. And we've had this conversation when we were on those late night herfs when we weren't working. Some companies were dead in the water because I think they got caught short when COVID hit. And, you know, we happened to be just a little fat. Yeah. In and, you know, we, we rode that way for a couple of months. And it was, and it's, and it's been great. And we've been, we've been. Did we lose him again? He's there. Yeah, you hear us, Hector? He has video. I don't think he's audio. I hear you. I, I see you. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah. And, and Hector, you know, you know, I know Jack's on it. He's done a really good job with that Salesforce over the last few years. I, I, I mean, I really see the penetration you guys have had with accounts over the right. last. Is, is yeah, Jack yeah. watching? If Jack's watching, I don't want to say anything that might. That right. Might be right. But I think that's helped you guys a lot. I mean, I really do. You've reached a lot of accounts in the last few years. Uh, having, 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 hiring Jack. Yeah. Was on the sales aspect is now a multi prong approach. I have a guy who's been in the industry for years, who's recognizable. Yep. And when he walks into the shop, he has presence. You know, he has relationships with these shops that we may not have had, you know, and yeah. it, it gave us another face outside of Eric's. You know, it's it yeah. was Eric and then our reps and then now here comes Jack. And, and Eric, uh, you know, I like to call it Jack's minor league farm system. You know, found the guys that that he wanted to get, you know, they targeted, and you know, the young Tyler, you know, young Tyler in Ohio, good young kid. They both take credit for Tyler. That's fine. Uh, Tony Gomez, who's done, who's done a really yeah. good job in Texas, yeah. uh, and I figure eventually he'll get that driving thing down pat. And you know, now this the last in-house guy that we hired, Gavin. He's good. We like Gavin. Good young kid, you know. Yeah. It was as dry as Melba toast, but. These are kids. These are these are these are two kids who smoked our portfolio, who knew our cigars, who we didn't have to bring them into Miami and give them a week long seminar on what they were smoking. They knew what we were, they were smoking. They knew our stuff, and they're they're nerds at heart, and they love smoking, and they love being and they love being part of a team. He really, I, I think he's done a really good job cultivating that. He does a good job working with the brokers, and his job, his relationship with Eric, and his dynamic with Eric is a lot different than mine. I mean, they, their, their, their idea, their goals, and their, their agendas are to sell cigars and get into as many shops as possible and do as many events as possible. That's not my, you know, that's not my dynamic. My dynamic is different. My dynamic is to make, get good blends and, 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 and get them out there, and then hopefully the team, you know, it makes it easier for the team to sell it. Listen, a good, a good, uh, you guys know several manufacturers who have great sales teams who are selling pretty decent cigars. But if the cigar is great, it's if the cigar is really good. It's it's an easier sell, is it not? Yeah, but sure. well, you still got to get it into someone's hands, and that's always you gotta, I, absolutely you yeah, always got to get it into somebody's hands. Yeah. But I think when you have two guys who can walk into a shop and have relationships that go back 10, 20 years. Yep. There he, I, he, I lost him again. No, he's he ended his. He ended his answer. You got to ask the next question. Wow, he just went. Like, I didn't hear the rest of the answer. So oh, maybe on my I heard end. It. Maybe okay, maybe on your end. Yeah, maybe on my end. It might be you, Coop. You're talking <laughs> shit about me. <laughs> maybe your maybe your gerbil in North Carolina is a little cold. I don't know. That's right. No, but it's saying Hector's bars are yellow and Aaron's are white. So I don't know. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Let's not take bring race into this. Hey, hey, hey bro. Let's come on. Uh, uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So, um, you know, back to a few things. Um. We we talked obviously there's stuff you have in the queue for knuckle sandwich right yes um and you guys have had a lot of releases in the last you know year what's been the biggest surprise for you guys outside of knuckle sandwich in terms of what's what's hit the market with you guys the biggest well listen we're just getting in the new we're just getting in some of the stuff from the show I mm-hmm. can tell you that I can tell you that warhead it's it's just I don't know. I don't know if I could answer that. If I could answer that accurately, I mean, the new releases are all limited. Everybody loves limited yeah. cigars. So I mean, I don't know if that's if that's a fair if that's a fair thing to say. Right. Uh, I do think 
I didn't think any of your women has gotten lost. I think that was the key thing. Like they well, all this year, for sure. Yeah. And I think because they've been staggered. Yeah. They come in staggered. When we don't have, you know, a guy comes in and he orders all five of the limiteds. And, well, this one came in this month. All right, great. And then, oh, this one came in next month. Great. Because, you know, and that's, and that's yeah. worked out. Uh, like, we just got in the Lazona 10-year, which is a 30-count box. I only have 300 of those. 300. Because I had a very, very small amount of this wrapper. And they came in and they'll go out. And, and then I guess uh, by the time people have those and hopefully sell through those, uh, the, the, the six province will be ready. I'm yeah. just I'm trying to think what really, you know, you know what really surprises me now that you ask? You know what really surprised me? The legs that 601 Blue still has. It's, it's a cigar. It's been around, you know, a long time. Yeah. It has, incre- it has an incredible amount of legs. The blue Toro, the blue Toro, and the blue Churchill—they they do very well. You know, and I remember my first conversation with Eric that I had. He was so upset about that that band change that happened, and and I think he was really worried about the future. I mean, I you know, this is my first time talking to him, but obviously it was corrected, and it was everything went back on track with that pretty well. The band, listen, we've learned in this company that you don't, and we've learned the hard way. I mean, prior to, to us starting as, as, as Espinosa Premium, yeah. uh, we're never going to change a band. <laughs> we're never changing another band. I mean, yeah. the, change, the, the band change to the Crayola bands and then to go back because instantly people think, you know, consumers, they think what they want to think. Yeah. Well, the band change, the blend change. The box change, the band, the blend change. Because it, it, you know, listen, a, a lot of a lot of yeah. brands are bought and are taken online, and and there is some kind of change to the cigar. But we don't. Once yeah. that's why we're that's why it takes us so long to do a band and a box, because this is it. Yeah. <laughs> we're not changing that at all. It's never going to change. The only thing that changes is the Warhead box changes every year, and but everybody knows the Warhead right. box changes every year. But we're, the the band change was a problem. But yeah, if you can ask me, what cigar still shocks me is how well. The, how well the 601 Blue does and how we lost a lot of turns on Orange but picked up as soon as it came back in stock it picked up and ran and flew out the door I was going to say the cigar I'm smoking the black and, and the reason why I say that is I remember the one of the I went to an event here this is in 2008 and everyone they, they were selling all the 601s uh, this was when it was EO and the blacks were kind of just sitting there, right? And I remember I smoked the, I bought a box of blacks that night uh, because I was really liking the cigar. And it seemed like no one was really into the black. I'm like, this is a really good cigar. And you know, you're talking about like, this iteration of the black, or the pre, or the earlier, or the, the earlier original. one. This is the EO ver- version of it. This is the EO version I'm talking about. That was a cigar. I mean, think about it. That was a cigar before its time. I don't think I think when that cigar was released, I wasn't with Eric at the time. When that cigar was released, that was possibly the the spiciest Connecticut out in the market, the strongest, you know, spiciest. Yeah. The, and then, you know, after after he breaks up, uh, he breaks his relationship. You know, they they dissolve their relate their partnership, and he goes on his own. The black wasn't one of the core lines that we came out with to begin with. No. And, there was a, yeah, there was. Don't on. forget, on top of the black, there was also one called Six Hundred One Natural. Yeah, the white. I remember that one. So that you know, I mean, the white. But that was more tradi- That was a very traditional Connecticut. Uh, so yeah, you you saw a bunch of other Connecticut's come in the market that had a little more. You know, Caldwell's was one that I remember that had a little more, a little more oomph in it, and I thought it was just the right time. Yeah. To to you know, I said, listen, we were still. Under the, the the worry of FDS, and this is a predicate date cigar. Let's do it. Let's do it. His concern, of course, was well. <laughs> it's it's one of those funny exchanges. Well, you know, another Connecticut will will bite and will take away from the crema sales. I go, but what about the seventeenth Habano that we've done? They don't, <laughs> they don't take away from the other sixteen that we do. You know, so, that, yeah. Yeah. So he kind of shook his head at me. He said, "All right, do what you want." You know, and when he says "do what you want," is this is on you if it fails. But you know, yeah. we we haven't had the, we haven't had that call. But then he started getting the phone calls, like, "Hey, can I order these now?" And, 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 I remember, said, hey, I remember, this, and you guys held the show. Yeah, this black's kind of working out. You know, 
<laughs> yeah. Can we tell them there's a bottle it's, in it anyway? <laughs> the best cigar in every company is the one that sells the best, but the one that's hottest at the time. Yeah. So every yeah. every month we may have a, a best cigar. You know? But I think this was a great, like, there's not a lot of cigars that I can think of have had this resurrection. There's only about three or four I could think of in the last few years that have had, like, uh, I think when they brought back the original Nestor Miranda, it had a huge, uh, that that took off, you know. But most of them don't see that that resurrection work out as well. And then this is one I think that really did. Oh, but the Nestor Miranda one, the Nestor, the Nestor Miranda, the one that's like the coffee break and stuff like that, that came out around, I want to say 2009, 2010. Yeah. About, right. yeah, around that time, yeah. Yeah, so I mean that just like this one. I mean, you had to be a fan. You had to have been a fan of Miami Cigar at the time, and then found out that was coming, and boom! And, and yeah, we for for us, you know, the the when we resur- when he resurrected his brands in 2012, and Black wasn't mentioned. Nobody, I don't remember anybody ever walking up to me and saying, "How come you don't make Black anymore?" The, right, right, exactly. So, but when we came out with Black. And then you know we drew the line. We cor- you know, we drew the correlation. Look, this cigar was from back in the day. Oh, okay. And then you know the, some of the then the old the guy the old six hundred one guys came out of the woodwork. Yeah. You know? Yeah. Yeah. I think Aaron even liked the six hundred one black. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, I like the original more than this more recent release. He <laughs> likes the themes. That's the that's the best Connecticut I've ever made, friend. But uh, the original, I mean, the originals I love because I the first time I came to. Uh, Espinosa headquarters. I brought Hector one of the originals, and he was too scared to smoke it. Well, it was like he was trying to figure out who in the office was had enough balls to smoke it. Right. Well, yeah. Listen, I I I, I remember those. I was a before I worked for Eric. I was working in a shop on weekends uh, because you know the the mayor here had balanced the budget of the county on his employees' backs. So you know I had to get a second job on weekends, and I remember I remember smoking a lot of six hundred ones. But never, never the black. It was, it was mostly the green, and I smoked a lot of Muscielago back in the day, and Mi Barrio, which was like the first thirteen or fourteen dollar cigar I remember that wasn't a Padrona or a Puente. So I mean, those those were those were those were those were good times. Those were those were different times, you know. Yeah, no, that's a good point. Um, the last, I guess, Spinoza question I have with this bunch before we get some of the other stuff is, you you guys are in a unique position that you. You have two factories, um, you have Lazona and, and obviously you up to San Latino with AJ. What drives the decision where you're going to make that? Is that strictly tobacco driven? It's tobacco driven. Okay. It's strictly tobacco driven. Yeah. So in terms of what, what Lazona right now, that's still the home for like or the original Granja, the Habano. And all you know how if, if Lazona had a sign like Burger King, it would be home of the Habano. That's what it would be. <laughs> I love that. That oh, you gotta run with that. You gotta run with that. Oh my little bottle. Oh no, well, we, well, look, we make crema there. We make uh, wasabi yeah. there. We make uh, we make all the 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 stuff for protocol as dark wrapper there. Uh, yeah. uh, we we make the especial there. Uh, we do make, yeah, but it's mostly yep. uh, it's mostly a habano driven factory. Okay. No, it's 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 a, you know, and like I said, it's amazing what you get out. I, when I went to that factory a few years ago, I was just amazed of what you guys squeeze out of that factory. We've um, made yeah, we've made lemonade there. We really have. Yeah, yeah, it was a really good job with that. Look, I um, could have done the tenth. I could have done the Espinosa tenth in Lazona, but I wanted to use Petal de Oro. He had Petal de Oro, so I went where the Petal de Oro. Was. I went where the where the tobacco. Yes, yeah. why and, make and, and that's what we should. That's what you should do. Yeah, why make life hard? Yeah. I agree with you on that, but it, it seems like that relationship's really worked out well with you with AJ. I mean, you this is I want to say you've been doing this six or seven years at AJ now. Uh, the relationship works with AJ because Eric and Eric and AJ are very similar guys. Mm-hmm. You know, they're A types. So they're very they're kind of peas in a pod in the sense that they they're, they're just they're very similar. That when they're together, they get along. I mean, they they, they do. They, I've seen it when I was there. Yeah, they have a mutual admiration society. Which is great, and I think AJ likes the fact that it's yet another brand that he can make cigars for that gets accolades. Yeah, which is great for his CV. I mean, his his he's got a his, he, he likes those. You know, when when Oscuro won Cigar of the Year with Snob, I mean, I was reading people thanking him for the cigar. I'm like, oh, fuck, you know. But what are you gonna do? You know. Uh, 
but you know, it's it's it is what it is, man. Listen, I, I yeah. it bothered me at first. I, I I've learned to accept it because you know Jack gives me therapy. But, uh, <laughs> Jack, Jack's given me therapy all these years. But at the end of the day, what is it? It doesn't matter. Yeah. I know they know the guys who the guys who need to know know, and anything that's good for Espinosa, I'm okay with. There you go. I have no issue with anything that's good for this company. This company is. I'm all about this company. There you go. All right, Aaron. Any more Espinosa questions on this segment for him? No, you got it. All right. All right, Hector. We got some other things. That was the longest segment, just so you know. Are you gonna take um, a break or are you gotta? Uh, well, I got one more thing before the before I'm gonna do the break. Oh, okay. Cool. Cool. Because uh, I don't think you've ever answered the cattle baron steak question of the night. So Hector, medium rare. No, I want to know your favorite steakhouse. <laughs> My favorite steakhouse. Well, the one I went to, the, my favorite, the, the my favorite steakhouse in the sense that I went several times here in Miami was Shoes. I love going. I to love Shoes. Shoes. It closed, right? Yeah, it's gone. Yeah, well, I was and shocked when I was staying at the hotel and it was gone. Not just that; they've taken, they've, they're, they're. It's like the, it's like the history books. They're, they're getting rid of Shoes' name all over my place. I, I was, I oh. was off the hotel. Yeah, it's, it's incredible. Now. I have a funny story, and it's just one of those things. I am, I am, I am a simple guy, in the sense that I worked and I worked. I did what I did for a long time, and I was very happy eating at drive-throughs and dives, and because that's the life that you lead, you know. And uh-huh. I'm not a fancy. I'm just not a fancy eater. I mean, there. I'm not a foodie. Jack's a foodie. Eric's a foodie. Eric's so much of a foodie that you can't. I have learned never to recommend the restaurant. To him. Yeah, that cool. seafood place he took me to was really good. Hey, he's never. I've I've been with him ten years. I've never had a bad meal anywhere he takes. Yeah, that it it was like you wouldn't think it's a great place. Unbelievable. Some of the best seafood I had was at that place. Uh, he took me to a steakhouse in Orlando. That's very. That's a famous steakhouse. There's several throughout the country. Del, Del Frisco's. Okay. Yep. Well known. Uh, and that's the, that was the most incredible. But when the menu came, I was reading it like the Torah. I would look at the price. <laughs> And then look over to see what the hell it was. I almost ended up getting a soup because I just, it's never been, and I don't think I'm cheap. I, I buy everything I want. I, you know, I sport on a bunch of, but it's just, I, I just could never, you know, it's just beyond me, you know? And, but, and they ordered like a bone in ribeye and they were just, they were, they were going to town. They ate like cavemen. Him and his kid ate like cavemen that day. That day. For me, it was it was it was weird, but I, I if I could ever eat at Del Frisco's again, I'd love to eat at Del Frisco's again. It's a good place, uh, Del Frisco, the Double Eagle place is fantastic. Um, I used to go there more when I was in New York. Uh, really good place. Cool. All right. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a commercial read, and then we'll get into our next segment. You want to pause my video so I can rearrange some stuff here while you're doing it? I was, I might you know. You could you could just uh, you could just turn your video off. Okay. Cool. Cool. Okay. All right. Great. So um, and what I'm, I'm gonna mute him as well all right so uh, i want to mention uh tailored smoke i want to mention tailored smoke <laughs> located in the heart of downtown charlotte's epicenter and now at the charlotte motor speedway or outside the charlotte motor speedway in concord north carolina tailored smoke is your one-stop shop for tailored cigar experience and by jerry tobacco the authentic Corolla leaf is one of the most robust and flavorful tobacco leaves out there during the golden age of cigars cuba was the leaf of choice to make some of the world's greatest cigars of course, this is one of the most challenging ones to cultivate. It fell out of favor by the 1990s. In the Hamastron Valley in Honduras, Julio Aroa took on the challenge of growing Corojo from the original seeds. And in 2000, he successfully reintroduced authentic Corojo back to the market. With over 50 years' experience in the tobacco business, from growing and curing tobacco to cigar production, the Jerry Tobacco Farm has been able to continue to deliver products to market with authentic Corojo. Now with Jerry Tobacco, who and his son Huso bring their very own brand to market, and each containing the authentic Corojo leaf. Aladino is available in a variety of blends, including the new Aladino Classic. These represent that golden age of cigars from 1947 to 1961. If they're now available at your local retailer. Be sure to ask for Jerry Tobacco, a legacy that is tasted in every drawer. And by Corona Cigar Company. At Corona Cigar Company, they take the fact that they are cigar fanatics just like you. That's where you'll find the best selection of the rarest and finest premium cigars available anywhere in the world. Plus, they have special limited edition of cigars available exclusively to Corona Cigar Company from famous international cigar makers such as Drew Estate, Arturo Fuente, Gurkha, and Oliva. They have the best selection, the best customer service, and money-saving discount prices. But don't just take their word for it. 
Forbes magazine selected Corona Cigar Company as the best of the web. Corona Cigar is voted a top five internet cigar retail by Smoke Magazine. Cigar Fichonano wrote, Corona Cigar Company, the largest best stock cigar shops in America. You can place an order online at Corona's website or visit one of Corona's four Central Florida cigar superstores and cigar bars and see for yourself why Corona Cigar Company is the ultimate cigar experience. And we're going to get into our Alec Bradley Live True segment, sponsored by Alec Bradley. 500 cigars are set a fire in this country every minute. Staggering statistic. Wait, that's a good thing. All those folks who react to a fine cigar. The trouble is, a lot of those cigars aren't worth remembering. They're just plain forgettable. That's why you should pick up an Alec Bradley cigar. You'll taste that baby and say, mm-hmm. I'll remember you, Alec Bradley. You can learn more at alecbradley.com. So, Hector, if you're there, you can come back on if you're done uh, uh, whatever you were doing there. We'll see. I got me. There you go. What did you do? Okay. All right. So we're in the Alec Bradley Live True segment, Hector. I had, to wipe, uh, had to wipe the dew off my lily. Go ahead. All right. No. So this is kind of a non-cigar piece, and I picked baseball. What else, right? Um, and I know we're going to be doing our big baseball show. I think Bear's talking about that Hall of Fame show. There is one Hall of Fame question we're going to talk about, but I don't think that will interfere with the show. Um, but I don't know. Did that Hall of Fame show, get, it hasn't gotten scheduled yet, right? Not yet. No. Okay. But I know, I know we're going to, after the season, we'll have the big wrap-up show with the baseball crew. Um, but I have a few just timely questions on baseball. And Aaron, feel free to answer these as well, too, if you want. All right. I'll, I'll try to use some of my baseball knowledge here. Okay. So the first question, Hector. Okay. Yeah, go Mike ahead. Piazza or Gary Carter? <sighs> wow. Neither one a true Met. Go ahead. Neither one a true Met. That's the problem. Uh, you know. They were great If we're Mets, talking so about, were... about what, they, what they meant to the franchise, uh-huh. I, I think – Carter Carter has the ring, but Piazza kind of Piazza kind of brought that franchise back from from some doldrums. So I would say Piazza meant more to the Mets than Carter, and he was there a little longer than Carter was. By the end, Carter was playing first, playing third. Right. And there there seemed to be some problems with uh, between him and Keith, and the persona that you know that good boy, you know that good guy persona and shit like that. So I, I would take Piazza. You have a thought on that, Aaron? Um, yeah, I mean, uh, with Gary Carter, I was, uh, you know, I'm younger than you guys are, so I don't have as, I don't think I was kind of as much in tune with what Gary Carter could do. Um, but, you know, I did have, you know, his baseball cards and all that stuff. I still have them. Um, but, yeah, I, I could see how Piazza could, what, what Hector's saying, like, you know, there's, um, you know, that that fire, that whole, you know, kind of standing up to Clemens whole thing, like all that kind of stuff like that, that was, yeah. He, you know, he brought a, he brought a, he brought a bit of kind of authority, I guess, to the team that it probably needed. Carter, Carter was the missing piece that the Mets uh, needed. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. And it, he was, where like, I was, Piazza like, was the team for a long time. Yeah, Piazza yeah. was the guy for a long time. I mean, remember the Mets still had strawberry and Hernandez, right? But Car- Carter and, and Carter made a, such a huge impression. His first game, as a man, he has a home run against the Cardinals to win in, in extra innings, or or they walk them off. But I think Piazza, Piazza, and Piazza really embraced being a Met. Where I think Carter, at the end of the day, was always going to be an Expo. Yeah, Carter was a big deal when they when they came to the Mets. Though I was in New York when it was it was like the Mets got a bona fide superstar from outside the organization. So did we. So did Piazza. Piazza was a, Piazza, Piazza but, came but to Miami. But got by a then, sand, but, got a little sand in his bag, and then ended up in Miami. Ended they, up in. They tr- in- see, they tried it with George Foster, right? <laughs> when oh, they got but, George, and that he, they got George Foster, I think, just towards the end of his career, unfortunately. Well, listen, it, George Foster comes to play for the Mets is not the same when you're batting behind Morgan Perez and yeah, and, and Griffey. Well, and yeah. Rose, you know, he's, yeah. you so, know, he's, he's batting yeah. behind uh, Ed Hearns and you know, <laughs> Lee Mazzilli. I love I love Gary Carter. I think it was exciting when he came to New York. Uh, I was, it was. Sad when, I was sad when he passed away. Of course, um, it was awful. It was terrible, you know. But but I love Piazza, and I had a chance to meet and smoke with Piazza. I'll never forget it. He was the great one of the greatest guys I ever met. Who was a celebrity. Listen, uh, I Piazza yeah. has Piazza has embraced being a Met. Piazza flew in from Italy to be at old at the old timers game. Yeah, that's he, a, that. Yeah, that and he lot, killed man. Art Howe, by the way, when I talked to him that day. <laughs> this is before Moneyball, you know, that stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so it was like he. It was funny. He, he the way he described Art Howe was how Art Howe was in Moneyball. 
So it, it was like a big deal. I remember. I've, I've heard a lot of people say that that wasn't a fair depiction of, of Art Hall. Well, and you wonder sometimes if that's folklore that became, you know, truth. You know what I mean? Like sometimes the this guy folklore acted, could become the, the guy. The way this guy played him in the movie, yeah. I, he, I he, Piazza just did not like the guy. He he said yeah. he said that you know he's played for a lot of managers and Art Howe was the one guy he just couldn't stand playing for. I mean he played for Lasorda, he played for um yeah how long yeah Bobby yeah, yeah. but no, I I'm 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 on Piazza with you guys as well. So I think this is more of a heck the next two are more Hector questions, but um I know you can't answer one of these Aaron but uh favorite World Series Hector that did not involve the Mets. Oh. Aaron, you could, yeah, you could probably answer this one too because it doesn't matter. But well, I hate them now. I hate them now because they 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 have they have conspired to commit a fraud on the yeah. citizens of this county. But the '97 Marlin World Series was a lot of fun to watch. It was, and it was so low rated. I remember, but it was a great World Series. Well, because Cleveland you there. had you had you know, look, I think every year. All the networks want yep. East yep. Coast versus West Coast. Yep. So now you've got a team from the Mistake by the Lake and an expansion team, four years out of expansion in the World Series. Yeah. That was yeah, that was that was bought. It was a free agent club, you know? But to to watch and 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 it's a shame because that was one of those that was a part of that run of Indian teams that were phenomenal. <laughs> they were right. phenomenal Indian thieves. Yep. And they, I think they only won what one World Series? Yeah, they won yeah. one World Series, and they should have been in eight of them. All right. Oh, they won none. They, they won, won none. Oh, they won none. And yeah, so yeah, the, think the about my car. Those are the my car grove Indians. Right. Yeah. I think I, I that was a that was an exciting World Series. Yeah. Uh, the, the 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 Diamondbacks Yankee yes. World Series yep. was a phenomenal World Series to see Johnson and and, and Schilling. But as a kid, I can tell you that the 75 World Series, uh, watching it here with my dad, who, you know, had couldn't have been happier because there's a Cuban playing for the Reds and a Cuban pitching for the Red Sox. Yeah. That, that made him it – was, it was very yeah. exciting to watch the 75. But I would say outside of the Mets 86 World Series, where my son almost went airborne in, in that last – in game six, he was an infant. I was, <laughs> I'm watching the game. He's he, – <laughs> He's six months. He's not, not even. He may be six months old. <laughs> and when that ball goes between Buckter's leg, I almost threw the kid off. He almost, uh, almost hit the ceiling fan. But uh, that 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 World Series of the Marlins was pretty special. Yeah, pretty special. Uh, I'm biased. Like I'll say the '80 Phillies and Royals, but probably if I said no Phillies. That '82 World Series with the Cardinals and Brewers was a great one. Let me let me tell you a story. That was seven that, as well. Yeah. Let me tell you a story that's pretty funny. I was in Korea, and I go, we're in the field a lot. I was in the second division. The second division, I'm not an, I wasn't an infantry soldier. I was a signal soldier, but I was assigned to an infantry unit. And we lived in the field doing field exercises and shit because, you know, there's a lot of North Koreans on the other side of the border. So I remember going into the field with the Cardinals up on the Royals in the 85 World Series. And me coming back from the field, and the Royals did what? The, the Royals came back to meet the Cardinals. How did that? Yeah. I mean, that World Series is completely lost. I have, you know, I have a, I, I, I have a pretty good memory of all the World Series. I cannot recall any of the. I don't know how the. I don't know how those fucking Royals beat the Cardinals. It was crazy. It was, uh, yeah, because the Cardinals beat the Mets for the division that year. That was, uh, that was John Tudor. That was a John Tudor. That was a John. Yeah. <laughs> They could not hit John Tudor. And to this day, they cannot hit soft tossing lefties. <laughs> All right. This one's a Hector question. You visit the city field this year. You went to city field. Uh, was that your first time there? What did you think of the stadium? It, it, the stadium is beautiful. It is. It really, they a, did a great a job ball. at that state. They really did. What a ballpark. Uh, listen, it was uh, – I'm not going to lie to you. I, I was – I was really just in awe the first couple hours I was there. Yeah. I mean, I, first of all, you walked around the stadium. The stadium is enormous. Very big stadium. I was I mean, surprised. Yeah. I, I was just in Chicago last year, and I remember walking around the block where Wrigley Field is, realizing how tiny Wrigley Field yeah. is. 
And then you come here to you you come to watch a Marlins game. That regardless of what I feel about the franchise, it is a it is a nice stadium. It's the way it's laid out. It's very it's very wide. But you go to City Field and it's very tall. I mean, it's just you know you're like man, there are nosebleed seats at City Field. There there really are. And you walk around, and I met a, I had, there's a guy named Greg Prince who's an author who wrote several books on the Mets. So, because, you know, I'm in law enforcement, I write whoever the fuck I want. I found out is that email, and I wrote him an email. I told him how much I enjoyed his book, and we became email buddies. And we emailed at the beginning of each season. We emailed once during the season. I emailed that we do a recap at the end of the year. Very nice guy. I wrote him and said I was going to the city field for old-timers game, and I got to meet him. And we'll get the pictures from you. I couldn't believe it. Like you're getting these pictures <laughs> from the field. And it was it was incredible. Uh, the experience the the experience was great. Uh, I mean, the Mets won, which is even better. But it was so it was so fun to watch fans get to the game on time, not get up from their seats during the innings, and stay till the very end of the game. Unlike going to a Marlins game, or maybe as I've heard. Aaron say in the past, or guys who go to Dodgers games who yeah. get there in the third inning and leave in the seventh, and they get up in the middle of the inning to go pee or it get a beer. It wasn't always like that, Hector, with the Mets. With Shea, they, that used to be with Shea. I'm telling you, it used to be like that with Shea, though. Well, but so Shea was a toilet. I mean, I remember Shea as a kid. Shea was a yeah. toilet. But City Field, the fan. Yeah. See, now I'm not hearing Hector again. Yeah, I don't hear him now either. Okay. <laughs> now he's. Now, okay. He's, he's hands are moving. Yeah. yeah, just you know, hands are moving. He's uh, the gerbil is uh, the fuck is playing for either team, you know, and, <laughs> and they get there late and they leave early and they're obnoxious. No, no, it was you know, it, it was the most, it was the best experience I've had in a long, long time. Yeah. I don't okay. know if I'll do it again because it really, New York, you know, whew, New York, that's a lot of that's a lot of no, forget about the expense, the amount of people in New York is ridiculous. Yeah, I mean, the, you couldn't see a piece of empty sidewalk anywhere in New York. Just... Probably Flushing, where they play, is a very congested area. I mean, I'll just tell you um, that as well. Um, and we were in that area. I think I told you when my dad yeah, passed away. Your dad passed, right? Yeah, and we we didn't we we opted not to go to a baseball game. It wasn't the appropriate time. We you no, know would have loved to go uh, unless your dad was a baseball fan. And he, he wasn't. Was no, and ball. he was. Like I think he told you, he when the Dodgers left Brooklyn, that was it for him. He never, I, he never went back. Yeah. I walked around city field. I walked all the way yeah. around. City I field. was, I've been to city field by the way. So years ago, the food, the food situation of city field is no joke. The museum at city field, it's, whoever yeah. did the museum at city field must've worked at Disney yeah. because when you come out of the museum, boom, uh -huh. there's the area to buy all the shit you yeah. want to buy. I was buying stuff like a drunk tourist. Now give me that. And I think I need another bobblehead and you know, and, and yeah. I got a bunch of stuff and, uh, and the Seaver statue was very touching. It was yeah, very, yeah, I bet that was big for you. Very, it was very yeah. touching. To the, yeah, the I went to see the Phillies play, and it was the first year they opened the stadium uh, when I was there, so it was great. I haven't been to the Yankees. In fairness, I haven't been to the new Yankee stadium, so I can't compare it. Um, I, listen, I've heard it's a beautiful stadium. I, I heard too, a, yeah. I, I know it's a band box, but hell, there are a bunch of stadiums in, in baseball that are band boxes. Uh, our, our good friend Miguel's stadium is a band box. Ball, All-American yeah. ballpark or uh, the, where the Reds play, I mean, yeah. you know, home runs fly to that place like it's going out of style. <laughs> but uh, I, I, I think I'll, I, I may go again in a few years. I'm, I'm good for right now. But it was, it, it was very nice. It was, a, nice. it was. I, I treated myself to something I should have done years ago. Good for I, you. I enjoy it. Thank you. Yeah. All right. So the next one, we'll all answer these. Uh, these are some uh, yes or no's. Is strictly the answer. Uh, if you want to talk more about it, it's fine. I have six players who are, I'm sorry, five players who are eligible for the Hall of Fame in 2023. I want to know if they get in, yes or no. And I'll start with Scott Rowland. I don't think Scott Rowland's a Hall of Famer. I don't either. He was, a, yeah. he was, he had the highest amount of votes of the guys who didn't get in last year, which I was surprised about. Yeah, he's, I don't a think border, he's, he's a borderline guy. I don't think he's a Hall of Famer either. All right, Gary Sheffield. Gary Sheffield might suffer from Jim Rice syndrome. Yeah. That's what might prevent him from getting into the Hall of Fame. I think his numbers are. I think his numbers are, are Hall of Fame worthy. I think uh, it's ironic that he won a World Series with the Marlins with possibly his worst year at the plate ever. Yep. Uh, he managed to win a World Series. Uh, I think what happens to Gary is 
the writers will remember just like Jim Rice that he he could be very you know and if they're cigar media people who never get it. <laughs> oh, I like Gary. He was really good to me. He's yeah, there's good. some some guys were crazy about him, you know. <laughs> he was really good to me. I'll tell you that. Oh, but Every everybody's time I, a yeah, dean of cigar media. Years ago, you were the an dean of me cigar media. Years ago. Yeah, I. Uh, but he was. He, I mean, no, he. I've I've seen him a couple of times after that at, at a couple of events. And he's and he actually, I was shocked when he remembered me. That was shocking. So, uh, how about you, Aaron? Gary Sheffield. Yeah, Texas, I'm rocking. Yeah, I don't think yeah, he gets anything for Hector. I agree with Hector on this. Yeah, I don't know. I don't think so. Yeah. Billy Wagner. Yes. Yes. No. Billy Wagner, it's a shame that he's not in the Hall of Fame. foot relievers. I don't think in 2023 he gets in. That's what I'm saying. It's 2023 is the end. Listen, he hasn't been in yet. Uh, I, it's I, he seems to me like a veterans committee guy. That's getting, where I'm kind of going with that. Yeah, yeah. I don't. I don't think he gets in. I think he's deserving of the whole yeah. thing. I just don't think he gets in. Andrew Jones. <sighs> Andrew Jones was a, a hell of a player. Yeah, but I think uh, what happens to Andrew Jones is kind of it's almost. It, it, it almost runs parallel to what happened to Dale Murphy. Great career at the beginning, and then he ta- when he tailed off, he really tailed off. <laughs> yeah, I mean, when we had him with the Phillies, <laughs> it was terrible, Dale Murphy. When he, I mean, when he tailed off, he really tailed off. Yep. yep. It was a Juan Samuel situation. Yep. He, yep. Went, he went really, he went, uh, and I don't think he, I, I, the, had he left the league three years prior, yeah, I think he would be in, but he's not getting in. Uh, Aaron, does he get in? Uh, no. Like I said, he didn't. Uh, he he didn't put up the career numbers uh, necessary, and like you know, I, when, I, when it was time, it was time. Like yeah. he, he got he got the call. They said they said don't even don't even clear out your desk. Just come just come out here. Yeah, you know. <laughs> yeah, I I agree. And, but, the sorry, Turk, Ben. The yeah, Turk I, wants to see you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right, last one, Jimmy Rollins. I'd have to look at. I'd have to compare Jimmy Rollins' numbers to Barry to see how close. No, he, he's not. He's not a Hall of Famer. Because, uh, that's that's. I, I, just, I, I, I looked at the numbers. He's not a Hall of Famer. We, right. we, yeah, we, we go got, I think we have similar criteria. Okay. <laughs> this is Listen, a tough one. Number of World Series <laughs> wins do not uh, apply. I here. know. I agree. I, I understand that. I understand Listen, that. You tell me, Billy. You you mentioned Billy Wagner. You you wanted to get more of an argument out of me. You should have told me John Franco. John Franco is a guy that deserves to be in the Hall of Fame. Well, good. Wagner has more than more saves than Franco, so. But we that's three more that, saves. The reason I say the reason why I say no three more not, saves than Franco, I think, or Ruiz five more is, saves. Well, it was a tough for these guys to get in. I mean, like, Mariano was a different story, obviously. But listen, mm. we've talked. We beat this. We beat this issue to death. In the first Hall of Fame class, you had Ty Cobb, Babe Ruth. <laughs> you had what six? Who, who were the first six to go into the Hall of Fame? And do you know not a single one of those guys got a hundred percent of the vote? Yeah. So I mean, listen, we had to wait eighty years to get a to get our first. Do you, you remember Bear defended Bear, Derek Jeter? That was shocking. Like Bear was pissed that he didn't get the unanimous vote. The guy voted against Jeter. How, so, li- all right, listen. How does Griffey, who brought baseball back to kids? With his video game, not get a not get a hundred percent of the vote. Who hate who does not like Ken Griffey Jr. Oh, I agree. I think the problem with Ken Griffey Jr. is those years he had those years in Cincinnati were a little lackluster. His skills and, I think that, his skills and that's what's on people, but that's what was on people's mind. I'm I'm not defending what people voted. I think he should have got in, but but yeah. I think listen, I, I have this argument, and I don't want to start bringing up names because I I have this argument with people all the time. I think Dwight Evans should be in the Hall of Fame. Dwight Evans is a weird – he's a weird representation. He's a guy who got better offensively as his career progressed. And that's not the case with a lot of guys. A lot of guys, their career, you know, their, their defense will stay – it won't get better. It'll stay the same maybe. But their numbers, their, their, their statistics don't, aren't, aren't as good. Big Poppy's the one guy that I don't know why the hell that guy retired. He could have kept playing. I think Ortiz could have played another year, maybe another two yeah. years. But, but the know, thing is, is like you don't know when it comes. Like, uh, like Nelson Cruz, I would put Poppy with Nelson Cruz kind of at the end of their career. Like Nelson Cruz was doing that thing, and then like this year, it, it, it hit him. Like Nelson Cruz was gone. Yeah. But then you got Albert Pujols. Go figure. He gets his last 
surge this year. Going back I mean, to look, St. Louis. The, uh, nobody you know, argued more. They're, they're pounding. They're pounding him up. They're, he's got. He's got a, a. You know. He's got a season pass on the on the drug testing. They're just pumping him full of it. Just like letting him go. <laughs> nobody. Nobody argued more than me in our group about Pujols being in the All Star game. He was undeserving of being in. The I agree. I agree. Yeah, As man. was Cabrera, but guys like Ben, who are who are who are who are, who are baseball guys, Bears as well. Oh yeah, his career. But it's not an All Star Hall. It's not an All Star career game. It's an All Star yeah, game yeah, for the yeah. year. I don't right. think he deserved to be in it. Yeah. But have have a final season uh, game at the All Star in the All Star break. There you go. Farewell, farewell yeah. All Star game. I, I I would love. I think that would be so interesting if they did that. Of course, you but do they that won't do like, it because it's a good idea. So yeah, yeah. Exactly. Why, why would we do that? Right. Yeah. <laughs> uh, um. By the way, my my stance on Jimmy Rollins is I agree. I love the guy. He had some. There were a few years his numbers were comparable to Jeter's, but he didn't have those over a sustained period of Jeter. Well, I mean, he was MVP in 07. I mean, like he he has good he has good numbers. He had he good numbers. Hall of Fame numbers. He, I agree. I'm not disagreeing. And I love the guy. I, I think he's going to get some votes, though, um, because I think the the Phillies, you know, going to be fresh on people's minds. So I think he's going to get some votes, but I think he falls short. I need year. to I need to when I get a chance and I haven't done it uh, this year, I'd like to look at Jim Edmonds numbers and see if Jim Edmonds is close, is, is Hall of Fame worthy. He has some good numbers. Right yeah, absolutely. He has some good defensive numbers as well. Yeah. And he really he has the greatest he, uh, catch of all time, I think. Right. Well, I think the the greatest catch I've ever saw was the 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 Mets fucking left fielder, some guy who stole a home run from uh in a in a playoff game. What the hell is the name of his name? I can't think of his name right now. And he doubled up Edmonds at first. Uh ah. two eighty four, three ninety three home runs, uh OPS of nine oh three. Yeah, the problem is he you know the, you have those magic numbers. Four hundred yeah. is the home run magic number. Yeah, yeah. He's short of that. Are you sure yeah. If he gets in with three ninety three, I'll stand I'll 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 argue again that Dale Murphy should be in. He had three ninety seven or three ninety eight. And you know, three silver sluggers and you know, all this other shit. Yeah. Well, well, I put f- Edmonds in over Harold Baines. Oh yeah, yeah. I mean you gotta say I would I don't think there's any Yeah, argument. but Harold Baines, you gotta let me you gotta let him in. He wore that ugly White Sox uniform for years. <laughs> There's gotta uh, be you, there's gotta be some you gotta get something for wearing that ugly uniform. Yeah. How about the one with the shorts and the collar? That that ugly sock. Yep. All right. This is this is a one must go question. Okay. This is related to the New York Yankees and their demise in the playoffs this year. Alan Rubin has to go. No, he's not. Oh, on it. So oh, I'm gonna name I'm gonna name five things and I wanna know if if you got rid like if someone has to take the fall for this Yankee demise. Who are the five that – who is the one that has to go? And here are the five. Here are the five. Oh, well, hold on. Before you give me the five, is it really a Yankees demise? The Astros they, are a hell abs- of a – Yeah, but they, the way they played – But Hector, not to win a single game. To, Come to on. Play, let's, let's call it like, what it is. They were beaten. I mean, they were just beat. And you say the – They were so two. down that they used a Red Sox demolishing of them – to try to get themselves pumped up. That's how bad it was. I mean, that's how bad yeah, it was. That was pretty weak. Yeah. You, you know, <laughs> go go in. And, Jeter and, said it made him sick when he heard that. The pot, the Padres at least put some fight into it with the Phillies. They really did. I mean, it, it's just the Padres at least the gave Padres, a fight. The Padres, the Padres beat the Mets and the Dodgers. Yeah, yeah. So I, mean, I don't it, think we have to talk yeah, about they, their fight. But the Yankees yeah. had a struggle on the road. By the way, yeah. on the road, they yeah. took two or three yeah. from the Mets on the road right. and then beat the Dodgers. Yeah. All right, but here, but okay, you want to say demise, elimination, whatever you want to call it. Right? Okay, someone has, to take, someone has to go because of this, right? And here are the five: Hal Steinbrenner, the owner; Brian Cashman, the uh, GM; Aaron Boone, the manager; Aaron Judge, Mister September, or the Yankees bullpen. I think the weakest of those five is the Yankee bullpen. Wandy Roger Wandy Val what is it? Wandy, what's Wandy's right. last name? Rodriguez. Peralta? Wandy Peralta <laughs> pitching three days in a row. What the hell is that about? Look, how Brenner ain't going anywhere, brother. He owns the team. He's not going anywhere. I'm right? just saying you have the chance to get run away. Right, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, I don't follow the Yankees enough right. because of my hatred of them. It's you know, I, I don't want to say I hate them. I just, you know, I'm a Mets fan. It's hard yeah. to like. Yeah. Uh 
Brian Cashman has been the GM there a long time. He's not going anywhere. He's, it he sounds already, like he's staying. It sounds like he's You staying. already know the manager's not going anywhere. Aaron Boone was never going anywhere. Uh, Aaron Judge had a bad September. Okay. What about the six months prior to September? Where, where <laughs> well, he, had bad, he had a bad October. He had a, he had a bad he, October. He's he taking home. Them. He's going to win the MVP, right? Or do you, no, are, you, are you one of those guys that are going to win it? He's going to win it. He's going to win it. I mean, I'm not. He'll he win it, it, but he doesn't deserve it. He's gonna, but I'm just saying he's going to get it because of the East Coast. The East Coast bias. Yeah, it is an East Coast bias. Is that bull, listen, I thought the Yankees were going to win the game Cole started. And they, they, they tuned him up too. So, you know, it, it, the weakest link there is, is the, the bullpen. Did I? Oh, shit. I turned off my video. Sorry. Uh, what happened? I, I, and listen, I didn't watch. I, I, didn't, I don't really pay attention to the American League. I'm a National League guy. What happens to the, the, their, their left fielder, the kid that got from Kansas City? He got hurt, right? In that collision. Didn't he get hurt in that collision in the left field with the third baseman and then during like game two or three? What's his name, Bertandi or something like that, or Andrew? Uh, yeah, I'm trying and, to. Yeah. Oh, What's Benintendi. Benintendi. Yeah. yeah. Did he did he play the whole series? No, I think he was done, wasn't he? He got yeah. hurt after that, right? Yeah. He wasn't a difference maker, though. Yeah, he was, was useless. A, when, yeah. when He's not a over. difference maker, and that's Harrison Bader was the biggest Yankee in the entire postseason. Oh yeah, what he had like what eight home runs the whole yeah. end, like seven home runs. Or, he had yeah, a he was Daniel, a timer. Yeah, he had no, a he Daniel came Murphy over the cards. He had a Daniel Murphy type postseason. Yeah. Yes. Yes. He did. Where he just you know, listen. Uh, Contract year, man. You gotta get paid. Gotta, gotta get paid. Judge. Judge shut it down. Uh, <laughs> uh, I'm gonna give you my answer. Go ahead. Um, Hal Steinbrenner, say what you want. I don't agree with the decisions he's making, but um, he still has. There's been a. They've won every. They won every year under him, right? Since he's on the team. Same with Cashman. Right. I, I think Cashman may need to make some adjustments with his with his understaff, but um has he done a good job in the let no he didn't. Um Aaron Judge, he got them to it. I mean Aaron Judge was incredible for them this year. The bullpen, we've seen teams get around the bullpen. It's Aaron Boone. And and Aaron Boone because he his stoic approach, his low energy. He was given the baby bombers in 2017, who was supposed to be the next dynasty, and he's gotten them nowhere. And it's not that he hasn't had the talent. And that whole thing with using the uh, with using the Red Sox as motivation just shows how out of touch this guy is. Um, I think that some of the I, I'm not saying they would have beat the Astros, but someone could have made them competitive against the Astros. I mean, and I, I think that goes down to the field manager whose job you know, it is. I, think, I think this will be a better question to ask after the Astros play the Phillies. Because so, if the Astros steamroll the Phillies, if, and, and I don't want them to, all right? I'm a national yeah. guy. But if the, Astros take the, if the Astros take the Phillies in four, then you have to wonder, is this possibly one of the greatest teams of all time to go undefeated in the postseason? Yeah. So if the Astros steamroll the Phillies, they the Yankees might get a break. They just got caught. They just they became a pebble in somebody's shoe. The Astros are just the Astros. That's a fair comment. I we say it's a fair comment. You know, uh, you, the you Mariners have... had the Astros in the, not on the they were on the they they lost some games to the Mariners. Yeah. Hold on, they uh they were on the they 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 beat they swept the Yankees, yeah. correct? Yeah. Who did they play before the Yankees? Yeah, the Mariners, right? The Mariners beat the Blue Jays. The Mariners yeah. beat the Blue Jays. Who did the Mar the Mariners lost to the Astros? All right. The Mariners lost. They got swept, but they went that 18 inning game. On the, all right, so know. they are undefeated. The Astros are undefeated in the postseason. Yes, they, they, haven't lost, they haven't lost a game in the postseason. If 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 they go if they go four and one or four and zero oh against the Phillies, maybe you have to say, you know, maybe the Astros are just too much for anybody this year. The Astros would have just taken it to anybody. And sometimes when you run across a team like that that's a buzzsaw, it just magnifies your deficiencies. It just magnifies your deficiencies. So, you know, yeah, there, there's some problems with the bullpen. Boone is, is, is stoic and not the most animated. He's no Dallas green, uh, you know, judge, judge shit the bed. Uh, yeah, a but, player's going to shit the bed sometimes. I mean, it happens. I mean, it listen, happens. where, where would you guys be right now? If Bryce Harper doesn't catch fire. Bryce Harper's caught fire. Bryce Harper, yeah, but he he had a bad he had a bad September. 
That's yeah, but awesome. now, but he's in October. Yeah. And how's Different. he playing in October? He's doing pretty good, yeah. huh? Yeah. I think Schwarber hit a home run that hasn't come down yet. That one was one, yeah. And, uh, <laughs> so, you know. Yeah. By the way, the Bryce Harper home run on Sunday might have been uh, my, one of my greatest Phillies memory ever. I mean, it was. Oh, a, uh, but, Aaron, I'm curious your answer to this question. He's writing it up now. Hold on. Um, uh, I'm not a fan of Aaron Boone, but I, it's, I would say go back. I don't know if it was on the, the preseason show or it was just in our baseball chat, but we talked about this Yankee team being a, a men's softball league team, right? Yeah. Like that was a discussion that we had. Yep. I, I thought the sure. Phillies were a softball team. Remember, I kept saying the Phillies Oh, were... okay. Maybe I'm getting confused. With yeah. The I thought the but I think the Yankees came up in that discussion. Yeah. So. I mean, this Yankees team is not – that Yankees team is old or, you know, home run hitters or just home run hitters or whatever. Like Rizzo, Donaldson, Judge, uh, you know, Stanton. Rizzo was a good – Rizzo has been good for them though. No, yeah, Rizzo. Rizzo started off the season like on fire. Yeah, um, he was fantastic. Yeah, I'm not saying he, he's not yeah. good. I'm just saying like, uh, you know, it just. Well, they've got a thirty. They've got a thirty-seven year old Donaldson. Yeah, you know, Glaber Torres is still playing. You know, playing in the in, in, in yeah. the field every other day. Yep. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Listen, they had some good pitching, but that bullpen was like, um, like wow. Chapman was done for at the beginning of the season. Chapman was never any good this year. Like he was trashed the entire year. Yep. He was the guy that was supposed to anchor that bullpen. They had some guys that stepped up, but they weren't expected to pitch that much. They're probably gassed out at the end of the year. Like, like, did Cashman go get any help? He didn't. He got none. Well, he went and got. Uh, he made he made a trade at the All Star game. He picked up uh, the kid from Kansas City who didn't. You know. Yeah, who, but Benintendi was not. But Benintendi was an All Star. Benintendi yeah, was an All Star. He, he, like, well, he was the. He was the charity pick for the Royals, but would Cashman was, was Cashman given the checkbook? So. To, was Cashman given the checkbook to do that, or was give? Yeah, that's what I'm kind of wondering. Was his hands checkbook? Tied? It's fucking the Yankees. How do you have, how are you ever gonna ask? I'm, I'm just question. saying. Was he Cashman's made moves in the past that I thought the moves he made. I thought the Rizzo move was a great move he made last year. Sure. Yeah. <laughs> I wish he, you he got like, Rizzo. He got Gallo. Like you know, Gallo. Didn't, Gallo in. was one of those guys. He couldn't play in New York. I mean, no, I understand. I'm not. I'm yeah. just saying, but yeah. Gallo was crushing it in Texas. Yeah, he brought him and Rizzo. Like those, those are two studs last year. Yeah, that he brought over, right? But like, yeah. you got to go get, you got to go get some arms or something. Like you get, got to get some arms. In the, bullpet, in the, the starting pitch, you, you, got, you got Cole, Nestor Cortez, who was a like completely came out heart. of nowhere, heart. stud this year, right? Yeah. Um, but you got to get some. You got to get. You know, we know that. In the playoffs, starting like the whole pitching strategy that you have during the season is completely thrown away when you get in the playoffs, which I don't understand. But it, the guys that get paid to make these decisions make this decision, not me. And they're, you're you're going bullpen games and all this other bullshit in the playoffs. It's like you gotta have like arms, man. You gotta have a stable. And yep. uh, no, nah, they didn't do that. Interesting. All right, last question. Hard to disagree. And I got to tell Alan Room is arguing with me in the, co in the comments about how Judge was such a better hitter than Otani this year. And I asked him how Judge did on the mound. And I think we're, we've yeah, we're that done. We're done with that. So, well, we, uh, we, yeah. I just think the voting is going to go a different way. That's what I'm saying. I, you can't discount what Otani did this year. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, don't and, argue uh, too much with him because he's going to be in Alabama. I'm not. I, I said I asked. No, no. Alabama, gonna, but that was it. I'm going to have to hear about you yeah. guys in Alabama. So, all right, go ahead. <laughs> all right, last question. This is an easy one. Astros or Phillies? Uh, if I'm if I'm rooting with my head, I'd say the Astros. But I'm a National League guy at heart, yeah. and I want to see the National League win. Like we talked about the other night, I'm an AFC guy. I'm an Eastern Conference guy, and I'm a National League guy. I just I want to see the National League win. Uh, sorry, Coop, I'm going with the Astros. Um, <laughs> they have uh, they have amazing pitching, and they have amazing offense. Uh, the Phillies just do not have that pitching. Uh, no. Like, look, uh, Nolan when, Wheeler. When the Nolan... game goes to the bullpen, that's when we're going. Like, Padres, you're at the, the Padres table, man. You're at the, the table. What's happened with the Padres? The Padres. I, 
we had to hit runs. To, we had to score all those runs to get. I'm not disagreeing. I'm, by the way, I think the Astros are going to win this series too. And Hector Neris comes back to Philadelphia. I, oh, and that, my haunting fear Harris is he's going to be on the mound out. and get the freaking like, win. Striking out Harper like to end it like this oh, is dirty. Hector, Just dirty. Yeah. Game four. You got to come out with what's that name of that? What's the name of your lefty who can't? Who can't? Who either? Are you talking about Sir Anthony Dominguez? Yeah, I can't I hear so. us now. Yeah. Did he – did we lose him again? He froze his time. No, now he's – he's, 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 he's Alvarado, is that his name? Oh, Jose Alvarado. Yeah, you need to start he – need, he needs to start the first inning of the first game. Hit the first no, couple. Well, that, uh, <laughs> Topper's not doing that. So Topper announced the four starters already. He's going with Who? the – Syndergaard's going to be the fourth starter, by the way. Well, why, that, I, I can ask that question. Why didn't Syndergaard start that game? Why did they bring the stupid open? Like, why do you bring Bailey Falter yeah, to start this no, game? No argument that's for why, me on that. That's why Topper does not deserve manager of the year. But that's like, but that, that, look, that, but he did, you don't count the postseason, though. That's what I'm just saying. Well, you know, look, I, bet, I, am not I bet you when they saw that, they delayed, they recounted. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> look, look, I'm happy to be here. <laughs> um, if we get the five games, please just if, we, if they're gonna clinch it and fill it up with the Astros, please don't have Hector Neris on the mound to do it. That's oh, all. I, it wouldn't that just be just ironic? I mean, just uh, it, it would be just, just our luck. I mean, uh, I, I want them to have a competitive series. Hector uh, Neris pitches in all four games, has a yeah. collective ERA of 0. 0.5 or yeah. something like that. And Hold on, I, I need the hard for the game. postseason stats this year, yeah. By the way, I'll throw what well, Aaron's doing. Now, I'm going to throw another stat at you guys. The Phillies have never in the history of their franchise played a seventh game. They put a fifth deciding game, never a seventh deciding game. So, so you're going to be pretty much locked down during the World Series, right? Um, here's the thing. Yeah, I mean, here's what I'll just say. You know, ninety. I always say ninety three was my favorite baseball season of all time. That that team, and I knew we were going to lose to the Blue Jays, but they gave a fight against the Blue Jays, who are who are. A monster team that year. They were juggernaut. You did when they, not think they were going to lose to the Blue Jays until Joe Carter hit that home run. I did. No, I did. I did. They were down three two. I mean, it was. It was just. But, All right, but it was Hector a, Neris. Two wins, a two twenty five ERA, four innings pitched, five strikeouts, and a point two five WHIP. <laughs> Hector Neris MVP right there. <laughs> Guy Hector shot. Neris. Uh, Hector Neris taking the ball in the ninth inning. <laughs> We were a better team when we got rid of him, is all I'm going to say. Hector Neris is awful. I mean, he's just he, awful. Look, yeah. but, but that is the thing. The he, Astros took an awful player and made him made him better. <laughs> Sometimes when you're around better players, you become a better player. I mean, yeah. you know. I mean, that was Girardi's guy. I, and I was, you know, I've, I've defended Girardi a lot, but his loyalty to Neris, I was all over him on that. All right. Let's kind of, I want to move through here. Uh, we have our Soprano segment, and this is uh, a qu- this one question here. Um, and I'll read down this list. And, and Hector, you're a Sopranos guy, right? I am. I want to know the favorite, and I'll read down the list of them. The favorite Guma of Tony Soprano. Okay, and here's I'll, – I'll read – Aaron added a couple of good ones too. So there's some, there's some solid Gumas, and then there's these – Oh, we lost Coop. <laughs> He's ready to do it. He's gone. Oh, right, the problem is back. I, I got said, I got the list, so I can still do it. He said uh, Gumad. I mean, you know. Yeah. And his wife his wife pulled the plug up. <laughs> <laughs> I got your Gumad right here. <laughs> All right. I don't teach you to say Gumad <laughs> in my house. All right. So I'm gonna give you a list of of, of these ladies here. Okay. Uh, so Juliana Skiff, who was the realtor that was played by Juliana Margulies. Uh-huh. So it was like the, towards the end, the, the chick that was also banging Christopher. Right. Uh, Valentina La Paz, which was the uh, art lady. All right, he's back. She okay, back, yeah. yeah. Say Gumad again. See what happens to you. Uh, Gumad. <laughs> <laughs> hey, so I'm, I'm reading the list off to Hector. All okay, right, go ahead. Uh, so Valentina La Paz, who's the chick that was good going out with Ralphie. At, you know, that met at the stables and stuff like that. And then right. Tony's pulled over onto her. Uh, Irina uh, Pelton, which is the Russian girl, the young Russian girl. Uh, Svetlana Kirilenko, which was the cousin with the one leg that was taking care of uh, Uncle June. Uh-huh. Uh, Gloria Trillo, the Mercedes uh, dealer. 
Uh-huh. She was played by uh, what's her name? Uh, Annabella. Annabella Sciorra or something like that. What's her yeah. name? Sciota. Something like yeah. that. Uh, Sonia Aragon, who is the chick that he hooks up with in that's like an escort in Vegas, like when he goes out and does the whole mushroom thing. Mm-hmm. And then uh, Lorraine Caluzzo, which was the she was like in it for such a short time that like I guess he was banging her. She was from the New York family. He banged, he banged her early before. Apparently, he had a his. He didn't bang her on the show, but then right, it was just bang. It was way yeah. before. Yep. Yeah. Uh, and then Coop threw in Doctor Melfi, but they didn't. He never ever hook up. They right. never hooked up, so that's no. Uh, he right. tried to hook up with her. He did try, yeah. and uh, I added two more that were kind of in that Melfi range that were not hookups, but I think that there was flirtation you know, that it was going to go, which was um, Annalisa Zuka, who was the Italy boss, mm-hmm. and then uh, Isabella, who was the the girl in the dream episode the, that was staying over at the Cusumano's house. Right, the I Dream of Jeannie Cusumano episode. Yeah. Uh, to me, it, of all of his gumads, I thought the Mercedes dealership girl was the best because she was crazy. <laughs> and do you like London and, Royal? And, do you like uh, London Royal? Hey, you got meat. There, I and I can't. We'll, we'll talk about this in private, but crazy always wins. Their <laughs> pH tastes different, so <laughs> <laughs> crazy always wins. Oh, insane? Okay, where do I sign? Yeah, that's the one I like the most. Yeah. You guys? Um, I think I would probably lean the same way for the for the women that he actually was involved with. Um, but uh, Valentina La Paz is um, it's it, it probably doesn't have anything to do with the fact that uh, of her character in the show has more of my own internal stuff about she was on another show before, right? Wasn't she on a... What other show was she on? Wasn't she on another show? A kid's show? Or like when you a show you would have watched as a kid? I don't know. I have to, I have to, I have to go back and look at her IMDb. Uh, yeah. But um, of the uh, others, the Italy boss and the Isabella chick were amazing. So um, Isabella, like the the... The accent, all that kind of stuff. It was it was pretty nice. That was the girl, the the BMW leadership. She was in Jungle Fever, if, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. That's the first movie she was in, if I recall correctly. Oh, maybe. She's, yeah, she's hot. She's so hot. and she's yeah. insane. I like insane. Yeah. All right, so, Coop. Uh a little spit little, it, little spit it out little, before they reset your router. Um, yeah. <laughs> okay. Um interest just a little fact. It was Leslie Vega who was the um Valentina. Um, yes. and, um, she was in Get Shorty, but she was uncredited. Beverly Hills, 90210, 21 Jump Street. But here is the, here is the interesting, um, here is the interesting little known fact. She was married to John Farris from In Excess. Wow. Well, there you go. Yeah. Yep. So a little known fact with that. I'm going with Irina. Um, I thought she was the hottest, one of the hottest of the ones, uh, to me, I, I think he was a little devious, you know. He, uh, you know, he had a little bit of a devious streak. Um, but I'm gonna go Irina on this one. Uh, but but close second would be Gloria. All right. So the show I was thinking of that she was in. I'm, I'm sorry to go back. Head of the class. Oh, see, I never saw Head of the Class. Yeah. I, I mean, it was I like a seen... show, like a kids show that you, I could not like. I may have show, seen but... the first couple of Howard Hessman episodes of Howard Hessman, but. When yeah. the Scottish guy came in, I didn't. I didn't watch anyone. She was in head of the class. I didn't, didn't know that. Yeah, sixty-eight episodes. Wow. So I was ten. I was ten to fourteen at that time. So it's a little bit of a, that, you know, that remember your beginnings kind of thing in there. Little Elizabeth Berkeley action right there. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Yep. Good one. Good one, guys. All right. Uh, one more round of uh read Hector so you can readjust the gerbil no, I'm and good. We'll, we'll wrap this up here so this will be a very short one to wrap up here so I uh, want to mention J.C. Newman Cigar Company founded in 1895 by Julius Caesar Newman J.C. Newman Cigar Company is the oldest family owned premium cigar maker in America for four generations in 127 years J.C. Newman has been handcrafting many of the world's finest cigars J.C. Newman is headquartered in an iconic 112 year old cigar factory in the Ybor City National Historic Landmark District in Tampa, Florida. At the factory known as Elver Hole, J.C. Newman was, was premium cigars by hand and hand-operated antique machines, including the American. 
J.C. Newman's Pensa Factory is the second largest in Nicaragua. It's where Brickhouse, Pelo de Mar, El Baton, Corum, and Yago cigars are hand-rolled. J.C. Newman's Diamond Crown, Maximus, Julius Caesar, and Black Diamond cigars are handmade by Tobacco R. A. Fuente in the Dominican Republic. With its longtime partners, the Arturo Fuente family, the Newman's family, the Cigar Family Charitable Foundation, which supports low-income families in the Dominican Republic with education, health care, vocational training, and clean water. Visit jcnewman.com to learn more. And by Casa Cuevas Cigars. The Cuevas family has five generations of experience in cigar making. For many years, they have manufactured cigars for many industry leaders out of the Las Lavas factory in the Dominican Republic. The Cuevas family now has a brilliant brand to market with Casa Cuevas Cigars. You could try the Casa Cuevas Connecticut, Abano Maduro, as well as La Mandaria and the Patrimonial line. And of course, the Cuevas Reserva line. If they don't carry it, be sure to ask for your local hotel for Casa Cuevas Cigars. Casa Cuevas Cigars from our Casa de yours. And we're going to get to our Dunbarton uh, Deliberation Industry, excuse me, our Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust Industry Talk Deliberation segment, sponsored by Dunbarton Tobacco and Trust. There is no deliberation when it comes to Dunbarton's track record since launching in 2015. This has included seven consecutive top three appearances in the half of consensus, including number one cigar of the year in 2020 with the Mikarita Tricky Tracker. You can visit DTC Cigars to find a purveyor that carries the brands of Tobacco and Trust. So, Hector, this last topic, um, deals with something that I think you've been called. Um, but I, think, I know <laughs> oh, you have shit. an opinion on this. Oh, shit. Hold on. <laughs> All right. I was just in a super good mood. I got a text message that there's a Jack Ryan trailer finally for Jack Ryan 3, and now you're going to talk to me about something I've been called. Okay, go ahead. You've been called a master blender. Oh, yeah. 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 So here's my first question to you, Hector. Um, you, you, do, you, do, you, do you consider yourself a, a master blender? No. I don't consider myself a master. What would what would be a master blender in your eyes? Uh, I don't know. I don't know. And let's let's talk about this since we got time. Yep. Yep. I mean, I've still got two more cigars here. So, uh, all right. I'll start off with this one. Guys who are master blenders don't call themselves master blenders. I'll start off with that one. Guys who blend cigars, uh, and I'm talking about the guys that I know that are in my circle, that when I sit, go to the show, I go hang out with them and I go listen, I talk to them and listen yep. to them. They don't, you know, they, they don't, they don't need that kind of jocular adjustment, you know, uh, that kind of hitting their laurels polished, you right. know? Uh, I think, uh, there are guys who have who have grown up in tobacco fields who you know who who've worked in this industry for 40 and 50 years can you say that they're a master blender well let's go back let's like, like you're asking me let's what what makes a master blender if if working with every tobacco out there or every you know every wrapper or filler leaf out there makes you a master blender okay i guess i can accept that but i'm trying to you know i i hear especially when it comes to cuba they always talk about well, this is a Cuban master blender. He's never worked with tobacco outside of Cuba, even though we know there's some Nicaraguan tobacco there. Uh, but yet they're called master blenders. I think maybe we should start using, our, and, and I don't like the term, but if we're going to start using it, maybe we should just classify guy, those guys as guys who, who know what to do with tobacco, who know what they're looking for, what they're trying to make. In my instance, you know, I, I don't own the company. So my job is to make blends and that the brand owner likes. Uh, I think I've always compared myself to what the Rachel Ray, you know, if everybody else wants to be a chef, I'm happy being Rachel Ray. You know, I can make you a good sandwich. You know, I, I, I don't know, man. I, I mean, listen, it's, it's, I know that when I know that I'm, I'm uncomfortable when people call me that because I think it has, it has airs to it, you know, but I'm even more bothered when guys that have been in this industry three years who, you never fucking heard of three years ago, start spouting and touting themselves as a master of this or a master of that. All of us learned under somebody. All of us learned from, uh, I'll speak for myself. I learned from a bunch of people that I went and when I first started, I got into this industry and, and really found my niche doing, you know, doing this. I spent time with a lot of guys who were maybe the lead blender at a, at a factory or for, for a company. I don't know, master blenders. That's just it's. I like that term, lead blender. By the way, I like that term I mean, a lot. Or the you know, or the really, I don't, I don't. How many companies are big enough to have five guys? You know, if you have yeah, a lead, just, I mean, just be just be happy to being a blender. 
Just have you be in a blender. Listen, yeah. it's, a, it's a job. Nobody knows the blenders, but everybody wants to be a blender. Have you yeah. noticed that? It's like this. Everyone is a blender. Uh, well, yeah. Listen, I. Oh. This yeah. is the kind of topic that could get me banished on every. That's why I picked topic. it. <laughs> yeah, and and you know and, and you got to understand I'm 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 I know a lot of these people and Eric's friends with a lot of these people as, as Jack is as well, and I and there are times I just want to point at him and go you you know that you didn't do that shit, you know that that guy's that other guy's blending it for you at this factory and you're putting your name on it and and it's getting mass appeal and mass sales. Uh, all right, let's do this. I, I I'm going to continue to talk about this as well. Yeah. But do you what do you feel? Because I know uh, it's it's usually the guys who do the interviews, who are in the media, who who have who use that term when talking to other guys. Do you feel that you use that term master blender because they've earned it, or because they're the blender at that factory, so they're obviously they're the master? When when do you guys start using that term, or do you pick when to use that term when you have guys on? We rarely I use think, it. I don't think I use it. Yeah, like, we rare, uh, There's a. There's only a handful I could think of that would fall into a category of master blender. But but what do you now? What do you classify as a master blender? If the guys, you know, if the guys only worked in the Dominican Republic and he's only worked with tobacco from the Dominican and maybe some Brazilian and some Nicaraguan, but never worked with Indonesian, never done with Cameroon, never worked with Sumatra, never worked with anything from Mexico, uh, never got tobacco from Honduras, Guatemala, Costa Rica, Peru, uh, or Ecuador, is he a master blender still, or is he a master blender because? the cigars that he made are masterpieces or, or so, you know, what, what is it? I mean, get, help me, help me see if I can streamline what my, what my decision should be or what I should consider it because I'm kind of lost on that. I know that it bothers me. I, it bothers me to be called that because I just don't, it's not something I've ever called myself. And then I hear it's, I, I hear people just anoint themselves. I'm a master. I hear, I hear people anoint themselves. I hear other people anoint people with it. <sighs> Yeah, I think it's two. There's two I've seen with that. I see more people anoint people master. Blender. There's a few that have called themselves that, but there's a lot of people that anoint. Um, um, I'll give you a good example. I saw you know, this guy's a friend of mine, and I've had this discussion with Nick Sirius. I saw him being advertised as a master blender. Nick will be the first one to tell you he's not a master blender, but someone else anointed him with that. And he's but you not know, comfortable with I've that. been anointed that. I've been anointed. That. I know you have been anointed with and that. I've, and I always say the same thing. I go, look, you know, just just call me the blender. You well, know. lead. I like that term, lead blender. I think there's something to that. I think you are the lead blender down there. So I think that's a fair. I think that's a fair title for you. Listen, I I'll, I'll give you, I'll, I'll give you an example. I'm I'm good friends with Willie, yeah. and Willie Herrera. We've never sat down and called each other the master blenders or, or ever. But Drew State, Drew State, Drew State calls him the master blender. But he's never called himself the master. Blender. I've never heard him refer to himself as a master blender. No, listen, uh, I, I just don't know. It's just one of those things that I think every time, every time some fucking guy comes out of nowhere and starts to, you know, an anoints himself as a master blender, it kind of takes away wanting to have that title. Well, hell, it's like anybody. It's like it's like uh, it's almost to the point now that it's like one of being one of these guys that you get a mail order, or you get a license to marry people online, you become ordained online. You know, I, I I don't know. What do you think, Aaron? Yeah, I, I just think with something like this, it's so it's so difficult to have it. I mean, you have to determine: are people using like are you the master because you're the the head head guy at a certain place um but what about the places that you, there's only one guy or you know but like i don't know I, like you said like there's so many different tobaccos out there there's so many different combinations like uh to me a master of something is like like the best of their craft right then there so, could only be one right could there yeah, only be there then really there's... could only be one um but, but every every that... five-star restaurant has a master chef right yes exactly um but you know, those are, they're not all the same, right? If you took all those master chefs and put it in, one of them's going to come out and be the best, right? So, sure. um, yeah, or the iron, just, you know what? I'm the iron blender. How about that? I like because it was, yeah. I'm yeah, the iron. That's blender. what I proposed for PCA to do at the, at, you know, the seminar day at the trade show is to anoint the uh, iron blender. But you know, I'm still waiting yeah, on the call uh, on how to organize you, that. You, yeah. yeah. I mean, you saw that on, on, on the show. <laughs> um, yeah. but yeah, I, I, I mean, Look, in an industry that needs its fairy tales, go at it. I mean, fuck it. 
Look, I've seen Kaizad Hazanta call the master blender. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that, that, but it wasn't by Gurk. Gurk, it wasn't Gurker who did that. It was, it was a retailer who did that. Yeah, right? who am I? Who am I getting away of a right, good story right. to sell a cigar? Right, and yeah. and listen, you know that the story sells most of the time. Yeah. yeah. Uh, no, I look. I don't consider myself a master blender. I have no idea what it takes to be a master blender. I know that in my short ten years, uh, I've made a lot of good cigars. I've made some that weren't great. I, but you know, I've made some that I didn't like. Uh, but you know, you work for you work for a company or you work for a client who wants a particular cigar. You make the cigar he likes, and uh, you hope that he can sell it and that it does well. And and you'll if it does, you get some of the accolades. If it doesn't, you're gonna get all the shit. You get all the shitting on it. Uh, but no, I I don't like the term. Uh, and and I think you know, there's there's two. You have owners, then you have owner, owner guys who own companies and who are hands on. Uh, so I mean, I don't know how we differentiate that. Then you have brand ambassadors running around there calling themselves master blenders. I think I think one of the problems with the term master blend, uh, one of the 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 uses of master blender might be promotion. Oh, come to the shop on I this day. That's why I say I see a lot of retail. Master blender Joe Blow will be there from. XYZ cigar company and you know he's going to talk to you about tobacco that he's never really put together but he saw it in a YouTube video and, and you know talk to you about its highlights and its taste and what you should yeah listen I don't know I know that when I when I do events and I don't do a lot but the events that I do uh, uh, I always tell them look if you're going to do it don't don't call me just say you know I work for Espino Cigars my job is to do this and, and that's operations what I yeah yeah, I mean, I do the I do the part of the operations, and yeah, I'm I'm responsible for coming up with the blends, and but I don't I don't know, I don't know. I just I, I'm bothered. There are some guys who are not even in the industry anymore, who you know open up little factories, and then you know three years later they're they're master blenders. Uh, they, they're 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 tasting in color. But, but Abe says uh, there are people working as dishwashers one day and master blenders a week later. <laughs> That's Abe he's says absolutely that well. right, and he's not wrong on that. Yeah, that, that. he's absolutely right. Listen, you don't think that it's it's a little humbling when you meet guys. All right, I'll give you some of the same some of the examples that happened to me. I've met guys who are 10, 15 years older than me, who have been in the cigar industry thirty or forty years, and never once had a cigar rated in any of the magazines or even in any of the websites. And then here comes this fucking guy who works part time at a cigar manufacturer, whose real whose job is. We lost. We lost. Him. <laughs> well, Hector is. Notice how it cuts out at the good stuff he's about to get to. Yeah. I'm getting so tired with this fucking gerbil. I'm going to strangle him. <laughs> I'm going to either strangle him or stick him up where his gear is at. All right. What's the last thing you heard me say? You were talking about guys. You were saying there's these guys. And then yeah, these guys, these guys that, that hadn't got anything, and then a new guy comes yeah. in. New yeah. guy comes in out of nowhere, and you know he, he, makes, he, makes, he works for a company, and they make a couple of good cigars, and they land on, they land on a list, and, and they generate sales, and it gets a really good rating. It's a humbling experience. And then, you know, you're not going to go over there and kick, kick this guy in the dick. You know, <laughs> this guy's been doing this for 40 years and he just hasn't had the luck. He just didn't get lucky or, or maybe the cigars weren't good. And nobody wanted to talk, but you, you don't want to rub it in his face. That's why, you know, when I, when I meet guys who do the same thing I do, we, I really, I'm, I'm really drawn to those guys to talk about tobacco. Listen, one of my favorite, one of my favorite moments ever at the PCA was maybe six years ago. I think when it was that, I think uh, <clears throat> it must have been five or six years ago. We got to the PCA early and I went to the round bar and, and Steve was there and Skimp was there. And I sat down and I just kind of just listened to guys who have been in this industry longer than I have. And, you know, they talk and they're talking to tobacco and, you know, and I, I like that, that, you know, I like that. And I never, I don't have shit to say. I mean, I'm, yeah, I, we I work for a company and we we have good sales and we have good cigars, but you know, you you have to see where you fall in that 
in that hierarchy, you know, and, and, and there's nothing wrong with, there's, there's nothing wrong with learning from guys and, 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 and trying to get as much, you know, as much, as much knowledge as you can get. But a lot of guys in this industry are, are just, they, they can't do that. You know, they're not, they're not humble enough to, to, to accept that there are guys who are, who are, have vast more knowledge than them. And I'm not one of those guys. I've got no problem. You know, I've got no problem. Uh, when I, when we were doing, and we were making a cigar, that Candela cigar that we made, you should have traced, you should have tried those first six or seven. I mean, they were fucking awful. (laughs) They were were awful. I couldn't, I couldn't figure out, I was missing something. So I went to talk to somebody who I, who I respect. I like their stuff. And I know he's partially responsible for some of those blends. And I said, look, I'm having a hard time with this Candela. So what are you using? He tells me, I'm saying, I'm using this. He goes, I'll get rid of that. Don't tell me about, I don't care about the rest of your blood. Just get rid of that. And I got rid of that and boom, Wasabi was born. You know, (laughs) so, you know, uh, uh, there are a lot of guys who don't have, don't have that in them. They can't, you know, uh, uh, I've, I've met guys. I mean, I go, I go to a shop where a lot of reps come in and a lot of new brand owners come in and I don't tell, you know, I'm, when I'm at a shop, I am a customer. I let yes. Alan do his yes. thing. And the yep. guy comes in, he makes his pitch. I don't get involved. I don't make any comments. I don't, and I hear them and you know, Oh, this is my first year. You know, I was at the factory, man. And I've been blending. I've really gotten yeah. really good at this blending. You know, I've, you know, I'm the master blend a year, a year in, and he's a master blender. Yeah. Uh, yeah. <sighs> it's, it's tough, man. It's tough. I have a few things that I'll just say on this. Um, if you're not like, here's the first thing. If you're a master blender, you're living, you're living in one of these countries where the factory is. That's where you live. That's where you're spending your time. You're not living in, um, you're not living in Ohio. Okay. That, that, that's the first thing I'll say. And I've even heard like soccer doesn't call himself. He uses the term master ligador. I think. He yeah. Does. That's a great term. I like it's that. It's not a bad term at all. I, I think it's a but term. master ligador among Cubans, a ligador is a guy who picks up women. And I don't think I can, I don't think it's a role I want to, I want to really, you know, yeah. but I think you're in trouble, you know, <laughs> but I think you're over, I think there's a point where you work with a large number of tobaccos. Um, I think it's impossible to work with every tobacco. Right. But I mean, if you're working with a large amount of tobaccos and you're involved with the consistency of those cigars uh, going forward, like, you know, these, these were, and I think, and look, I hate to say it. There's not a lot of master blenders that I think could be in a boutique factory. I mean, people, Look, but, but listen. How many? If you're a master blade, I mean, how many new cigars do you come do you come out with a year? You're not you, coming out with like twenty. You can't spend twelve months a year making new cigars. You just where, where are they well, going? But you know, Hector, a lot of the like if people coming out with a lot of these blends is alternates, right? That maybe don't make the cut, and then they end up well, getting. There's always at least at least right. uh, you know. Listen, I when I first started doing this, I'd bring back five blends for right. one thing. You know. Then I, I figured out I got to a point where you know there's two, these are the two that I think it'll be, and this is the one yeah. I like. This is the one I think, this right. is the one I think it should be. Yeah. And it's all about presenting it. I, I my rule, my clue is my my deal is always give them the bad one first. Give them the one you don't like first. This is the one I don't like. I don't yeah. tell them that obviously, so them, and then I go with the second one. That's that's the one. I, that's the way I've always kind of done it. But listen, I I just. You know, I just just I look at it this way. When you hear a guy who doesn't have that kind of CV, who hasn't, you know, hasn't hasn't put in, you know, if if, if the guy's not traveling put in the work, yeah, put in the work, put in the work. I mean, I don't I don't want to I don't want to use this guy's lines from his song, but you got to put in the work, you know, and <laughs> and there are guys who put in more work than others because that's just the yeah. way it is. I don't need to go to Nicaragua. At, at, and I didn't need to go to Nicaragua every month. You know, we were only doing two or three things new a year. You know, I can I can yep. do that over a couple of trips, but you know, I I have way more respect for the guys who live the life there. You know, who are in there, who are in the they're factory. in there, they're, they're in there. That's where I, they're. I, I, I respect that. I gotta respect that. But you know, I just when you it's I I'm trying to think. Somebody wrote something to me the other day. It was one of those Game of Thrones quotes. The guy who had if the guy calls himself the king, he's not really the king. You know, you don't, you, know, you, you gotta don't, earn it. You gotta earn it. Um, you know, no, and I, I you know, self flatulating. I think it's just, you know, yourself, you know, nobody needs to self promote that. Yeah. I mean, you know, listen, you guys know 
when you guys have guests on, you know who you're dealing with. Yeah. And smoked all their stuff. And you know who's responsible for it. Isn't that enough? Yeah. Yeah. It's do you, you think know, we, do you think that Espinosa sells one more cigar because I call myself a master blender or not? No. No. Espinosa um, sells cigars because people does like it bring company. people out to an event though. It I think by now after 10 years, yes. Yeah, All right. I, I, but I, I think they could call you lead blender, right? Or master ligador, right? Or something. Nah, whatever. And I think that could have the same effect. But I use blender and that's fine with that. And I'm yeah. fine with that. But it yeah. doesn't we don't sell one more cigar because the blender's at the event. We sell cigars because guys go to the event, they like the cigar, the stores behind the cigar, and one of the two travel, you know, one of either one of our reps, our in-house reps or one of our our brokers are there or, or, or Eric is there or Richie's there or Jack is there or, you know, the few times that I travel or the junior might travel, they'll go out and see us, but it doesn't sell one more cigar because I'm, you know, and, and listen, when I, I've at my events, when the, when the sales events are over or when the sales events are going on, because I'm not there by myself, I've usually got a rep with me while the rep doing his thing. I'm, I'm usually fielding questions from guys, you know, I really like this cigar. Why does it taste like this? And I think maybe that's some insight that the guy who put the cigar together can give you, you know, and, and, and there are guys who, who are, who are brand owners who do that. And I think that's fantastic to, to be able to have that, you know, wear that dual hat. But when I, when I do events, I usually do events at shops where the guys are more interested in, in that aspect and, you know, not the celebrity aspect or not the, the joke telling or the prizing, you know, cause that's, I'm not that, I'm not that interesting. I really am not. I mean, I'm not, you know, the, the, my, my vast wealth of knowledge is the, my, the New York Mets, the Miami yeah. Dolphins, police work, and, and this, that's all I have. <laughs> that's just really all I have to offer. But guys want to talk, you know, I just came from this trip with, with, uh, on the West Coast with Tim and, and, and at the shops. They asked me questions that I'm sure they don't bother asking Eric or bother asking Jack. And, and I'm more than happy to do it. But whether I'm there or Eric's there or Jack's there, our event, will do good or, or bad. Not on, on, on that. It's, it's just on the fact that the cigar is good. They like the cigar and the most important, the store is behind it. So I'd be not behind it enough to do an event. Yeah. So if I asked you, Hector, do you envision yourself becoming a master blender one day? I'm, I'm, I'm thinking I know the answer to this. I don't, I said, I what? don't think so. Yeah, I don't, I, so listen, I, I don't, I don't think, think so either. I'm not saying that as a negative, but I, I no, think me neither. I just yeah. don't look my yeah. life is here. Yeah. My life is here, and I, I've, I've always liked going to Nicaragua. I, I have an affinity for the people there, and, and they're hardworking people. Yeah. And, you know, they're in a tough situation there politically and economically. But I have a great time going to Nicaragua. I've always had a good time yeah. at the factory. I'm lucky enough that I'm friends with some, uh, some other brand owners who live in Nicaragua who always open their doors to me and are always hospitable to me and host me for dinner or we'll go eat and, and we get to shoot the shit. And, and that's, that, that to me is really the, that's really the, the benefit of being on this side of the, on this side of the, of, yeah. of, of, of the, of the ledger, you know? Yeah, no, I agree. I agree. Now, if I asked you if there's any master blenders out there, I, I really only could think of two that are out there right now. You're going to say Kellner and who's the other one you're going to say? No, because Kellner, I think, is sort of retired at this point. Well, maybe I, I may put Kellner in there, but the two I was thinking of were Benji Menendez. Who oh, I don't know. Uh, Benji Menendez, yeah, he's got a long – I mean, you can Google that one. He, he's, got he a long, for? he's retired, but he was with uh, – he was both with, like, Consolidated, and then he was with General. Oh, I think I know him. I've, I've yeah. met him before, yeah. Yeah, I mean, he's in his 80s right now. Okay. I, I, and I'd probably put Jose Sejas in that as well. I've met his son. I've never, I, I met the old man once. The old man was I think really he nice. Was guy. Nice great guy. guy. I've actually interviewed you, uh, Mr. Sass. He's a great guy. But would you put, I mean, I, I wouldn't have a problem if someone said AJ Fernandez is a master blend. I, I would yeah, have no I, problem telling him to put that title on him, is what I'm saying. This is a guy, a guy who, who, who does. <laughs> it, off. Top. Every time like he has something good to say, <laughs> I get the juicy stuff like that. Yeah. Every time. 
I'm getting him durable. durable. No, I try, I did that on purpose. I didn't want you to hear what I said. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is a guy who makes a lot of blends for people that people take credit for. He doesn't give a shit. You know. <laughs> you, you know. You know what I thought. You know what I thought was really interesting when Fred Rui had his company Nomad. He mm -hmm. was so honest about his approach, and he kind of said, "Look, I'm I'm in here. I'm learning about blending," but he would never never say he was even the blend yeah but you know what the problem is that the cigar industry needs more people like fred Rui. yeah he was always honest about yeah but there's very few of them who have done that um there is there is a there is a lack there is a streak of there is a lack of a streak of, of humbleness in this yeah. industry but but if aj fernandez gets that i have no problem if julio aroa i'm okay with that one but, right, how about guys who are not how about uh, AJ alan rubin is asking ernesto perez creo hmm? I don't have a problem if you call Ernesto Perez Creo a master blender. Um, you know, so I've, I've watched your show with guys who come on here and call themselves master blenders, and you know they'll say, "Well, you know, when we started." Do you have any yeah. names you can remember? Uh yeah, I got plenty of names that I can do. <laughs> but, you know, the after dark, pay five thousand dollars. <laughs> when, when, when you go on Patreon. I'll, uh, <laughs> we don't uh, charge. Uh, we don't charge for anything here. We're for... I've heard, I've heard, and you know, and and so how's the factory going? Well, you know, we opened in 2019. You know, now I'm a master blender. I go, oh, really? Wow, three years, man. <laughs> that's a lot. Uh, you you really you must have taken the expand the the advanced course, yeah. or you know, you were you got the PhD course. Look, I'm very. I, I have no. Uh, I I don't suffer from any of that. Penis envy, or let's call it blender envy. Uh, the guys who know me know what I do. The guys who are familiar with our brand know what, what, how it's done. Uh, the guys who I associate with know, and that's all that matters. And the guys who interview you and the guys who, the media guys, they know, and that's really that's all that matters. It really is. Yeah. I don't need, I don't need this guy from whatever fucking company to, to acknowledge me. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. Fuck it. You know, fuck that guy. You know, I don't need that guy, you know. But you go to these multi vendors and maybe you're stuck with some of these guys and you're shaking your head, you're going, Man, really? You know, and I've 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 been at these and I've heard guys talking, I'm like, Wow, that is so wrong. Yeah. What, are you, what are you what are you doing? What are you doing? Yeah. What are you doing? You know, but but listen, I it's to get back to what I was saying, it's it's the least it's the least visible position in the industry, I think. But it's the one that everybody wants to have because I think they, they like the way it looks on their, you know, uh, leads, uh, you know, ambassador, vendor, this, uh, they all want to put that in there. It's sexy. I don't know why, because none of us are sexy. We all look like we're beat the fuck. But everybody, everybody thinks blending is so sexy. All right, fine. Yeah, you're uh, And I think, there's, oh, there's, there's, <laughs> I think there are like titans who are CEOs, and that's certainly fine. And maybe they have a hands on in the factory. Um, I think that's totally fine. I don't, you know, but I think, like I said, I, I there's no, you know, it goes back to what you said. There's no real definition out there of this. There's no certification out there. And, and there um, never will be. Right. Never well, will like be. I said, if someone said AJ Fernandez is a master blender, and I'm not going to, no, I don't, I don't think people would see, have I don't even use that term when I talk to these guys. I just, I just know guys who know more about tobacco yeah. than me. And I don't think there's anything yeah. wrong with yeah. talking and, you know, spending time with them trying yeah. to, trying to pick their brain to help yourself and help yeah. your brain. And that's what I've done since day one. Since yeah. day one. I have, I've been around guys who make, who, who had that role and, and I, and I'm very, and I'm very thankful to those guys. And, and I still, you know, and I still, and I yeah. still talk to them and I, and I, and I, I look for them at the shows to, to rub elbows with those yeah. guys. My biggest problem is watching a guy who's a brand ambassador who, who goes to Nicaragua once a year uh to stays at a great hotel never you know takes the obligatory photo in the field does this photo which is my favorite i won't do that photo by the way you know, the photo with the, with, with the leaf you know uh, <laughs> the one guy with the hat in the field who the fuck wears a hat in a tobacco field i mean like a nice like a fedora yeah yeah you know, I, I, I i will never take that picture i said uh it's just, that's not me I, I like going in the tobacco field and everything, I, but I'm not going to pose for like I'm smelling the leaf or examining the leaf. Like, I have no fucking clue what that would be, right? So it's, uh, you know, you mentioned Willie, right? Here's what I'll say about Willie. I've seen, I've been to the Drew State Factory three times. On my last visit there, Willie had been there about five years now. What I'll say is Willie's, Willie's the head guy at that factory. 
sure, I wouldn't say he's a mess. I would maybe maybe I'll stop your call, Mental Blender. But there's no doubt Willie Willie Herrera is running that factory down there, and he's got command of that factory. You can see see that in him. Um, how about so, if we were, how about if we just term how about we use this term? He's the master blender for such company. He's the master blender at such factory. How about that? You know, maybe there, maybe he, maybe if he went to another factory, he would not have the, you know, he would be under the guy there, under yeah. the other guy's tutelage, or doesn't have the. Yeah. But you know, if you're the, you're the, you're, you're the, you're ruling the roost at your factory. That's right. That's what it is. You're the, you're the rooster at your factory. Yeah. And that's it. Yeah. I mean, I think there, you know, I think Jaime Garcia is a good example. With my father with that. I think clearly he's the guy driving the blends there. Um, you know, I would definitely, what, like I said, the two things that bother me: guys who come out of nowhere. And are self and self appoint self anoint themselves, and then the guys who are you know are just salesmen, uh, you know, or, or figureheads or ambassadors, and yeah. all of them there, you know, yeah. And but I know we, you guys like to rag, you like to rag on our boy, but I've been with your boy, and, and your boy, your boy's involved, you know, uh, whether he gets you samples or not, <laughs> whether the cigars get there, he's involved. Or not. No, he is involved. He's I know what we're talking about involved, he, he, and I, he's I've involved. Been and you've said that, you said he's and probably we more involved together. than most people, yeah. And we work together on a project. He, he yeah. gets his hands dirty. I That's look, Justin we're referring to, by the way. Yeah, folks. Of course. If his hands aren't dirty yeah. by the end of the day, then fuck yeah. that. That guy, that guy just wants yeah. to ride. He, he just wants he wants that yeah. sexy title. That's all. Yeah, yeah. That's true. But if you're if you're like running a, a factory though with, with like four rollers, right? I, I just don't know how you're a master blender. Unless you like did what Sehas did a few years ago and restart a fact, then that's a different story. But if you've been in this small factory for like three years and you've created some blends. I just, you know, and I've noticed there's a lot of guys who are, they have a behind the scenes guy who kind of works with them. <laughs> you know, there's, 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 you know, there's like a, a consigliere or something like that. Well, like a guy who runs your factory. Yeah. You know, like the guy who establishes your factory yet you take the credit for the blends. Yeah. I can see how that happens. <laughs> that happens. <laughs> sure. Yeah. Right. As we speak, <laughs> as we speak, <laughs> Listen, you know, you know who knows who to, you know who knows who a tobacco guy is. Other tobacco guys, yeah. yeah. Other tobacco guys, you can't you can't fool other tobacco guys. You can't. You can't. They don't. They'll either respect you or they don't respect you. No, it, there's no way. There's no. There's way a, there's there's a longer list of guys I don't respect than the guys I do respect. But the guys I do respect, they can do no wrong when it comes to this. Yeah. I mean, you know, I I know when they're full of shit and I know when they're not. Yeah. No, and there are guys who might think I'm full of shit, and that's fine. Yep. The guy I work for likes what I do, so I mean, we're we're good there. Yep. But you know, this is I, I, God. You know, and I hate to get all Dean Koontz on you, but it's perception, and perception is reality, bro. You know, perception is reality. Yeah. This okay. is the the this is the one job when if your cigar is good, everybody jo everybody's on your dick. But if the cigar's dog shit, you better you better run, run. for the you, yep. <laughs> you better run for the hills. You know. I agree. I agree. All right. I think we beat this one to death, guys. So um, we're going to wrap it up. What's a master roller? No, I'm just kidding. Just that's, that's the next. We'll do that next time. No, I'm that uh, can't sell post. He, he yeah, you are a master roller. roller. Uh, can, you ro you... can you roll cigars, Hector? I'm just oh, curious. I can roll the little the little ones for me to smoke there. Okay. The okay. I, it, if, I mean, that's, if, that's... I roll a cigar that looks like a... It looks like a like a muskrat turd. I, I, I've <laughs> seen some guys roll cigars. They're great at rolling, but I wouldn't call them a blender even. There are a lot of guys who are there are a lot of guys who can run a factory and who can teach guys how to roll, but yeah, you know, rolling are two different things. Yeah, yeah, I agree. I mean, um, but yeah, I've uh, I, I had a, I was waiting to do this topic with you for a long time, so because I know we've talked about this one. So, uh, and have has my opinion changed? Of all the times we've talked about it, my opinion has not changed. I've no, always said the same. No. Thing. No, but you know, you want to, you know, kind of put your feet to the fire here. You yeah, know, some you guys want, some you didn't guys, want to name names, but that's okay. But, yeah, uh, but it's just, but you, but here's the thing: what there's no benefit in naming names. No, All it does, you, you, is you, it's obvious. It's obvious. It's You're obvious. Right. If I, with the criteria I told you, if you guys, if you guys can't put it together, then, then it really doesn't matter. Yep. Listen, do you think like uh, the, 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 the I've the people who I've met at, at the events that I've done, they're they're not impressed because. I'm the blender. They're just they're 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 impressed because they like the company. Yeah, it's the company. It's true. and you know and and it's not like you know I have final say on anything. I mean I have 
significant influence, <laughs> you know, and, but at the end of the day, you know, every blend that gets made there, it's, it, 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 it's smoked. And we, we if you don't it. even own a factory and you're calling yourself a master blender, right? Right. I mean, but, I mean, yeah, I no. mean, again, you know, and I, I, the Kaiser example is one I, you know, you got to know it's something that Gurkha doesn't have a factory. And I've never heard Kaiser call himself a master blender. It was like, I was a, I've, I've seen retailers do that one. So listen, I, I have a lot, like I said, I have a lot of respect for the guys who, who, who live that life. Mm-hmm. I have a lot of respect for the guys who, who have sweat equity in that. Oh, I agree. I think there's a lot of guys, you know, out there, you know, like, you know, Arsenio Ramos. I don't know if I'd call him a master blender when he was alive. I think he was, I think he had a, an incredible talent for that factory. And he was a key part of that operation. I just don't think he was a master blender. I hear guys call Robinus a master blender. Was Robinus a master blender? I look at him as more as a farmer. But, you know, the, if you look like, at Julio the, Rowe is like, he's more of a farmer. That's why I was like, but I wouldn't have a problem. He has created a lot of blends too. Well, but, maybe, uh, but, so what's so what's the most important of all these criteria? I think it's the fact. Them, knowing what you're I, working. I don't think with. if you're an agronomist that translates to a master blender. I think no. you. I think the factory is the key part, and it's not just that you're going down to the factory, uh, several times a year. I think it's you're there and you're ensuring the consistency of this stuff. You know, you're you're really you're 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 involved with that part. You know, it's not just creating new blends. I think keeping the blends consistent is a key thing. I think that's a that's a key one with that. All okay. right, I think we beat this one to death. <laughs> All righty. <laughs> so uh, Hector, want to thank you very much uh, for being on the show. Three hours, baby. Didn't go quite. We almost did. We went yeah. longer than I thought, but that's you. You called it. Um, and uh, just I know, my, next, I know my people. <laughs> yep. A word on next week's show. Uh, Mickey Peg will be back next week. You know, I met him for the first time. At, at, what he's a funny motherfucker. He's really? a funny guy. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Now, mean, Mickey will t- Mickey will tell you he's not a master blender, but Mickey also say I'm hands on with this stuff. Is what he'll tell you. But, but you know what? That if everybody said that, we would be so much, we would be in a better place. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. We would be in a better place. We yeah. don't. We're not. We don't yeah. have to go around perpetrating yeah. a fraud. You know. Yeah. The, yeah. The, you yeah. know. It's you know just be honest, man. What the yeah. hell? I mean, yeah. there's so there's so little honesty in this industry. For you go, you have a new, a new question to ask every guest. Are you, Are you a master, master blender? blender? I think that's a great I, question. I think I, I think you should call this Hector's minute. Hector's <laughs> minute. <is a> <laughs> you want to sponsor the segment? <laughs> yeah. What do you want me to send you? Would you like a, a tin sign? I'll send you a tin sign. <laughs> he's a funny cat, man. <laughs> he is. He's a, yeah, he's funny. He is yeah. really funny. Uh, he was up in Charlotte a few weeks ago, actually. So. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, uh, yeah, he's a funny guy, good guy too. So, um, look forward to that. So that would be Mickey peg on uh primetime episode two forty eight uh, for next week. So, uh, um, as far as, and then it's go Phillies guys. So we'll see what we can do. <laughs> go national league. Good, good luck. Yeah. All right. I hope I didn't, I, I wore a red shirt. And I wonder if I jinxed them already. So well, I haven't worn the Harper Jersey, by the way, since Tom got the Astros orange on. Courtesy of Espinosa Cigars. So I saw that. I saw that. Where's the Charlie Manuel jersey? You don't have your Charlie Manuel jersey? Well, uh, you know, I've been trying to get a Charlie Manuel jersey. You can actually. order one. You can order one on MLB. Yeah, I'm trying not to. I'm trying not to pay three hundred dollars for one either. So. Oh, so you want one on the cheap? Well, you can go get one from uh, one of those I, Chinese sites. I guess. I, I got the, the Harper one. I paid for, but uh, I actually I want to get the uh, I want to get the Charlie Manuel pinstripe one. Um, get the blue Greg Lazinski. That's a hot one. That's a- yeah, but I, I and I, by the way, if Charlie Manuel is not throwing out a first pitch at the World Series, shame on the Philadelphia Phillies. Don't, Charlie don't Manuel should start, absolutely don't. be throwing out a pitch at the World Series. Yes, he should. He should. I mean, I was shocked that they didn't have him throw it out, but now, now give Charlie the ball in game th- game three. Give yeah, Charlie I'm sure Mike Schmidt will throw one out too, and maybe my, yeah, bring. I would bring Schmidt. I would bring Charlie lefty. And, and lefty. Exactly, those three are the ones I bring out. Uh, you know, because Charlie is the most beloved. I mean, you can say what you want. He's the most beloved of Philly uh, who's, you know, alive today. He's beloved, this guy. You guys, I, I know I ram him down. More than here. more than Pat Corrales? Oh, Pat Corrales. What a, what a disaster he was. <laughs> that was someone got smart and realized he wasn't a good manager. Uh, Pat Corrales was a great pitching coach, though. Great pitching coach. Man who hated everywhere, hated in Cleveland, hated in Philadelphia. Ever, he shouldn't become the. Well, the problem is when with Philadelphia, Dallas bolted. Dallas Green bolts was, was the problem, and they, you know, not just they had a void. And 
Paul Owens, who was the GM, he, he didn't want to take it over. Um, again, he didn't really want, and then he ended up having to take it over. He got them to the Baltimore World Series, but you know, he Paul Owens was in his seventies by then. You lost to you lost to the three run homer with Earl Weaver. Yeah, I the mean three uh, run homer, the three run homer offense. Yeah, so uh, if Fergosi was alive, I'd say get, give it to him. But uh, but no, I mean uh, I don't know if anyone from the ninety, maybe someone from the ninety three team comes out. And, and Maybe Mitch Williams will come and put one in the. They are not going to put. They are not going to put Mitch Williams out there. Get it. Or Lenny Maybe Dykstra. Lenny Dykstra that, comes out. That would be like like what Aaron the Boone pitch. did with the Red Sox. Saying if comes out, throws the first pitch. I, I, somebody and I love Mitch pitch. Williams. I really do like Mitch Williams. By the way, I think he was a great guy, uh, for the city and stuff. He was really a good sportscaster down there too. Uh, but but he cannot be thrown out of first pitch in, in Philadelphia. Um, so it'll be interesting to see. The, the you know um, we'll see what happens. So um, all right, buddy. All right, guys. Well, thanks everyone. Uh, we'll catch everyone next time. Take care, everybody. All right, see you guys.